it's just setting up the meeting now. So give me a moment. This meeting is now live on YouTube. The meeting shall now be recorded. The meeting is now being recorded. Thank you. <clears throat> Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the first virtual meeting of the Boston Town Area Committee. My name is Councillor Paul Goodale, and I am the chairman of this committee, and Councillor Colin Woodcock is my vice chair. As is our protocol to ensure public awareness of who is in attendance this evening, our first point of business is to take a roll call of all attendees. Karen, will you please take the roll call? Thank you, Chairman. Would all attendees kindly advise their attendance, please? Councillor Alison Austin? Um. Councillor Austin, you've just muted yourself. We can take it that she's here. Didn't. Didn't so. Have you got me? Present. Thank you. Councillor Alan Bell? Present. Councillor Anton Danny? Present. Councillor Anne Dorian? Present. Councillor Vivian Edge? Present. Say it again. Present. Councillor De Deborah Evans? Present. We have the chairman. Councillor Martin Griggs? Present. Councillor Neil Hasty. Present. I have apologies from Councillor Howard. Councillor Brian Rush. Present. Councillor Yvonne Stevens. Present. Councillor Colin Woodcock. Present. Councillor Stephen Woodley. Present. Thank you. And officers in attendance, Michelle Sachs, Deputy Chief Executive. Present. Phil Perry, Head of Place and Space and Lead Officer for this committee. Present. Maddie Eyre, Local Communities Development Officer and BTAC Grant Administrator. Present. Christina Willoughby, Town Centre Services Manager. Present. Pippa Rose, Democratic Services Apprentice. Present. And myself, Karen Rees, Clark to this committee. That concludes the roll call. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Karen. Uh, we will now move into part one of this evening's agenda and address the preliminary items to receive apologies for absence, please. We have one apology, sir, Councillor Martin Howard. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Um, and to sign the minutes of the last meeting held on the 22nd of January, 2020. If any members wish to challenge the minutes, please identify now on the raised hands button. Are there any raised hands, yes. Karen? Councillor, Councillor Austin Austin as uh, chairman. Councillor mm -hmm. Austin? Can you unmute please, Councillor Austin? Yeah, did you say raise your hand if you don't want to sign? Yes, if you wish to challenge the minutes, Councillor Austin. If I, sorry, if I wish to challenge the minutes. Um, well, so have I got to say something, yes or no? If you're Only in agreement, if... there's no need to come to screen. If you have a concern or a query on the minute, then you come to screen and address the, quiz, the query that you may have. Right. Um, I have no query. Thank you. Let's put my hearing aid in, sorry. Chairman, it appears nobody else wishes to challenge. Thank you, Karen. As there are no queries, I will take it that I have your agreement to sign the minutes and I will do so. Thank you. Um, to receive declarations of interest in respect of any item on the agenda. Do we have any declarations of interest, Karen? Councillor Dorian showing chairman. Councillor Dorian. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I need to uh, declare an interest in the update on the town fund because one of the bids is for the 3G pitch at Haven High Academy and I'm employed 
to work at Haven High Academy. So I would like to speak on it, but I won't take part in any vote. I do know it's just the reports just for noting, but I just want to keep myself right. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Dorian. Thank you, Councillor Dorian. Um, to receive answers and written public questions, are there any? No, no, I'm Chairman. Right, the public speaking slot, there is no public representation. <clears throat> that concludes the prim preliminary items. And before we move into part two of this agenda, I would like to reiterate that members need to register to speak on the raised hand button only. Please do not simply raise your hand. When an officer has finished their presentation, members will be invited to rest the meeting uh, in the order they have registered to speak. Uh, one of the first, uh, well, I've, I've, I've got to, uh, the first item on the agenda is on page nine, so I've got my own papers mixed up now. Um, BTAC small grant scheme, which were presented by uh, Madia, the local community development officer and BTAC grant administrator. The working group's recommendations are on a separate sheet, which was sent out on pink papers on Monday. Um, I believe Maddie will present this in two parts and we will take votes at the end. Thank you. Uh, if you would, uh, thank you. Maddy, uh, I'll open them if you would like to present your report, please. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, councillors. I hope you've all been keeping safe and well. Um, this evening, um, I would like to present to you my report on small grants for applications that were put on hold from round three of financial year 1920, following the COVID-19 outbreak. Following this, I would like to, if I may, through the chairman, put forward a proposal to the committee with regard to how we move forward with the small grant scheme for this financial year moving into the next. This is in addition to my report and is not included in it. Um, so the first part, I will go through uh, the report on the um, small grant scheme. So in accordance with the committee's small grant scheme, this report presents the applications made to the small grants working group in round three of the financial year 2019-2020. However, takes into account changes that have now occurred as a consequence of the COVID-19 outbreak and the lockdown situation. The recommendations on the report are that the committee endorse the recommendations made by the working group in respect of eligible applications where the applicant has confirmed they are to able to deliver their project following the COVID-19 outbreak. I will now move on to page 10, where I will work through uh, the full report. Um, six applications were received in round three of the, the small grant scheme, and of the six, all were eligible for consideration by the working group. In the light of the COVID-19 outbreak and lockdown, the original committee meeting where applications were to be endorsed was cancelled, and in effect, putting these applications on hold. When a new meeting date was mooted, all six applicants were contacted to establish whether, should they be awarded funding, their projects would be able to go ahead. And they were given three options, of which um, I've outlined all three in the report. Option one was to allow their application to be submitted for a decision at this August meeting. If it is approved, funds would be transferred into their respective accounts for their project to be delivered straight away or at a later stage when they feel able to do so. Option two, keep their application on hold until later in the year when they have a better idea of how they intend to move forward with their project into next year. And option three, withdraw their application from the scheme and resubmit another time when they feel able to do so. Applicants who have chosen option two have been assured that the funding allocated for round three, 1920, would remain available to them when they resubmit. So out of out of the six applications, four of them chose option one to be considered this evening. Um, so if you look at table one, that indicates all six applicants and the four that are going to be looked at this evening are uh, Boston Samaritans. Um, we've got Lincolnshire Community and Voluntary Service English Language Coordination Project. The Boston Hackersand City 2021 Exchange Programme and Wibberton Football Club. Uh, the value of each grant sought is set out in Table 1 and the committee's current small grant financial position is set out 
on the finance pro forma that accompanies this report, stipulating that any remaining funds to be ring fenced for the remaining round three applications currently on hold until later this year. I'd like now to draw your attention to table two, which as the chairman rightly said, you should have received in, in your pack as pinks um, on Monday. And this shows uh, the decisions that were taken by the working group um, at their meeting on the 27th of February. So we've got Boston Samaritans, and, and this was to purchase branded promotional materials to aid awareness raising of their services across Boston. They requested £706.67. Um, the suggested award from the committee was to award the full amount requested. I will now move on to the next applicant, which was Lincolnshire Community and Voluntary Service English Language Coordination Project. And the funds were asked for to contribute towards the cost of continuing to provide a single point of access website to enable people to find appropriate English language courses, formal and informal, from a number of Boston providers. They have requested £1,000 and the award suggested is £1,000, but would like to recommend that as part of the monitoring, provide evidence of impact which will support them looking for funding from other sources going forward. Then we move on to Wibberton Football Club. They asked for £1,000 to contribute towards the purchase of a mower to enable them to keep maintenance of their grounds in-house. Um, the award suggested is £500 and is proportional to the number of young people from BTAC areas supported by the club. And then finally, we've got Boston Hackersan City 2021 Exchange Programme, and this was contribute towards the cost of providing the visiting Japanese students and their chaperones the souvenirs, trips and activities while they are here and contribute towards their farewell ceremony. They requested a thousand pounds and the working group recommendation is that they awarded the full amount requested. So all in all that will mean that a total of three thousand two hundred and six pounds and sixty seven pence would be awarded for these four applications leaving £2,448.33 to be ring-fenced for the remaining applications received in round three. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Uh, thank you, Maddie. Um, I'll invite members now to, uh, to uh, the debate. Um, any, have any members indicated they would like to come to the screen? Karen, please. Thank you, Chairman. Councillor Al uh, Alison Austin, please. Um, thank you, um, uh, Chairman. You don't want to see me, do you? Um, oh, okay. Yeah, I've started my video then. Right. Um, <clears throat> first of all, I overlooked the fact that, well, of course, in Table 1, I am a, um, a trustee and a director of Centrepoint Outreach. But, of course, that's not being considered tonight. But I, it must be registered, of course. My other point was, now I've got the floor and then I've only got to speak once, haven't I? Um, Wibberton Football Club, yes. Um, uh, they certainly bring in people from all over the borough and has, has an assessment of the number of people from BTAC been made? Because I wonder if, if they actually know what BTAC is and what BTAC isn't. Um, you know, I, I'm well, very much aware that they, they draw from far and wide and not necessarily even from within the borough of Boston itself. Um, and to the best of my knowledge, although I'm not a member of Wibberton Parish Council, I haven't heard that they've requested any money, a contribution from them for any money, which of course is, the, you know, their home parish council. So that's just my comments, which, you know, you can bear in mind. I'm also aware of the fact that their young people certainly do actually train on the Garfitts Lane playing field, which is, of course, a BTAC owned facility. So maybe we should be asking for a, a donation from them in due course. Okay, thank you. That's all I've got to say. Thank you, Councillor Austin. I mean, your points were raised at the uh, at the at the our subgroup meeting, uh, and we were assured that um, obviously seeking the uh, number of um, young people from the BTAC area 
that's why we uh, only awarded 500 pounds as a proportional amount. So we were happy that uh, there were quite a large proportion of uh, people of young uh, people from the BTEC area and when we made this award. Um, that's why we that's why we went for 500 and not the full amount. But the point is well taken. Thank you, Councillor Austin. Anyone else, Karen? Uh, our second speaker is Councillor Anne Dorian. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Councillor Dorian, please. Thank you, Chair. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Yeah, first of all, um, I wouldn't support us asking Wimbledon Football Club for uh, any funds from them because I think they do a fantastic job um, in training and providing matches and competitive sport for our young people. Um, in fact, I know there's a lot of volunteers involved in Wilberton Sports Club and when they do use Garfitt's Lane, I know they maintain the ground really well and they go out and paint the lines themselves. Mr Chair, with your permission, I'd quite like to find out a little bit more from uh, Maddie about the uh, Hakkasan Exchange Programme. I know this has been going on, I think, perhaps a long time now. Um, I have, I've only been on council since last May. Uh, for this administration. So I'd, I'd really like to be brought up to date. What are the sort of figures we're talking about, uh, Mr. Chair? How many young people do they do a homestay when they're here and, and, and stay with uh, some of our young people? Who is going to benefit from this £1,000? Is it entirely Japanese young people and their chaperones, as it says, or is there a proportion from uh, Boston itself? Uh, I'll, I'll ask Maddy to come in on that, Grant, if she can. That's fine, Mr Chairman, uh, no problem. Uh, the the Hakazan Exchange Programme is um, basically uh, young people that are selected from the Boston area to take part, and they have to go quite through quite a, a rigorous selection process, um, and they actually have to raise the funds themselves uh, through various fundraising events and what have you, in order to be able to go. Um, when the exchange students come here, they stay with their elected family over here. Um, we're talking probably in the region of about 10 students um, from the Boston area. And I mean the complete Boston area, but it's mainly Boston schools uh, that they draw their um, students from to take part. Um, and what then happens is, is they go over to Japan um, and they are welcomed by the, the, the Japanese cohort and then they return the favour and the Japanese students come over here with their chaperones. And what the committee would like to do is to be able to offer them as many activities and opportunities along with their English students and, and, and chaperones to take part in those events. I hope that helps a little. It did. Um, through you, Mr Chair, I'd just like to thank Maddie for that explanation. And uh, I'm highly delighted that young people are given the opportunity to experience such a fantastic cultural uh, exchange. I'm happy to move uh, this report, Mr Chair. Um, I think it's great. Well done. Thank you, Councillor Dorian. Are there any more speakers? Uh, there are, Chairman. First, Councillor Colin Woodcock, followed by Councillor Deborah Evans. Sir, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Woodcock. Yeah. Um, as regards the pitch, I'm given to understand that one of the main teams that plays there self-funds a lot of the uh, update, update of that uh, round as well. So, I mean, they, have, they haven't asked for any money, but uh, they are actually self-funding to a great extent, I'm given to understand. Thank you. Councillor <coughs> Evans, please. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I do know a little bit about the Japanese exchange. Um, it's not as difficult to go on it um, as, um, uh, as said. Um, unfortunately, you have to have a lot of money to be able to go on the trip. And um, when my uh, daughter was approached, the, the, anybody can go on it at the high school as long as you... Then it was £3,000, so I don't know what it is now, but you obviously... You have to raise it yourself. So um, it's way out of reach of an awful lot of children to go. I, I do agree with the funding because I think the uh, sort of almost having an exchange with Japan is excellent for Boston. And I think they need a good experience when they come here. But I just wish it was a bit easier for the, the Boston children to actually go to Japan. And it tends to be those that 
are financially viable, I found, um, that, that, um, that get there a lot easier. But um, I certainly agree with uh, looking after, after the Japanese when they come over because it's uh, a very nice cultural exchange. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Evans. Is there anyone else, Karen? Uh, one further speaker, Councillor Anton Danny, please. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Danny, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you, Karen. Uh, I have two points to be uh, a bit clarified for me. Uh, the first one is on page 11, which is Lincoln uh, Diocesan Board of Education to contribute towards the cost of an arts performance-based project, exploring ideas of faith and identity in three schools. I would like to know which schools are they? That's the first thing. Secondly, is uh, Weberton Football Club. Uh, uh, I would be in favor of probably uh, granting them the 1,000 pound. The reason why I'm saying that, my ex neighbor, um, he used to look after the club and he used to be one of the coaches at the club and his son used to play uh, for uh, Weberton. So I think a, a lot of these people, they, they live by Boston area. So I think it will be right to contribute the whole amount of money, which is 1,000 pound. And that's all, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Councillor Danny. I mean, the Lincoln Diocesan Board in education is not one we're considering this evening. I mean, I'll ask Muddy to for the information yeah. if you wish, but we're not considering it this evening anyway. I just would like to know which schools are they. Thank you. If you okay, well, I, I don't. Do you know, Muddy? Um, I don't think they identified all of the schools. I think they mentioned uh, St Thomas's Primary School within their application. And I think they also mentioned uh, Haven High as a potential um, school. Um, but uh, and, and both schools are in the BTAC area. Um, but like you say, Mr Chairman, um, that one's not being considered this evening. Thank you, Muddy. Thank you. Thank you, Maddie. And as far as the uh, the Wibberton football, I will take it at the end, Councillor Danny, when we when we come to the vote, um, because we, we're considering both both votes together. Um, but um, say the committee were pretty uh, united united in um, in awarding the five hundred pounds, as that was we felt that was the uh, appropriate amount for the um, people from within the BTEC area, but. Your point is well made, and uh, when we take the vote, both votes, well, let's see if you get a second to change that, okay? Thank you, Mr. Uh, Chairman, thank you. Okay, right, if we can continue the second part of your presentation then, Maddie, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, so now if I may, through you, Mr. Chairman, move to the second part of my presentation this evening with regard to moving forward with the grant scheme. Um, during the period of lockdown, all potential grant applicants were notified of the suspension of the scheme, as well as those applicants which had already been assessed by the working group in February for round three. We have not been approached by any new group wishing to apply to the scheme to assist with the delivery of service as a consequence of COVID-19 or otherwise. However, I have recently been approached by Boston Community Transport who were awarded funding in round two of last financial year, um, which was to deliver coffee morning events uh, throughout the BTAC area. This of course couldn't go ahead. So they have asked if their funding can be retained until such time as they're able to deliver on this project. I've yet to respond, but will be saying that they can. Um, this is basically the current situation with regard to the scheme. We've got no um, additional applications. Uh, we've had no expressions of interest while we've been um, on suspension. And so now I'm looking for the committee's view on the steps we take to try and get the grant up and running again at some point in the future. And so um, I'm putting forward a proposal this evening uh, that in order to maximize on the opportunity afforded to groups to apply to the scheme, that we continue with the suspension of the scheme for this financial year and begin a period of promotion for applications to be submitted in January 2021 to be assessed and put to the committee in April 2021. We would still ring fence the remaining budget from 1920 to those applicants who have decided to defer their applications, which could potentially be picked up again in the January submissions and we would start 2021 financial year with 18,000 pounds, which will include rollover from this financial year, which hasn't been spent. 
This would give us the rest of the year to promote the scheme and be able to support groups and organisations in their recovery following the COVID crisis. And that ends. Thank you. Thank you, Maddie. Um, I'll open the meeting for the debate of the second part of Maddie's presentation. Are there any members wish to speak? Karen, please. Not at this point, Chairman. Thank you. That's fine. I mean, I think it's pretty. Uh, I think it's pretty straightforward. Um, so we'll move on to the um, the vote. If um, on, on both parts, if uh, if there are no speakers on that, um, Chairman, if I may just come in, Councillor Dorian did indicate she would move the first motion. Yes, I, I, I'd I was like going to, to ask see if she's, to if she's Sorry, happy to but... agree the second one as well, sir. Yeah. I was going to ask if she wanted to do that, but Councillor Danny did actually uh, indicate he wanted to increase the um, football, uh, we were some football club to a thousand pounds. I don't know if there's a seconder for that. Is there a seconder for that? Or, or does the, I know Councillor Dorian uh, uh, moved the, the 500, which I think the committee were happy with, but out of respect for the mayor, I thought we'd put that. No. Are you happy to move both parts, Councillor Dorian, please? Yeah, Chair, I am happy to move both parts. I'm afraid I can't support the £1,000 for Wibberton Football Club only because I think they should perhaps ask Wibberton Parish Council because um, I think we've done our part very well. Um, much as I support what they're doing, and I think it's great. But I, I can't support Councillor Danny's proposal, but I will move the, the report. <laughs> Thank you, Anne. Uh, do I have a second, please? I so second. Griggs is indicating, Chairman. Thank you. Is that, uh, Councillor Griggs, Mal did you wish to speak? Yeah, uh, just to say I agree with everything Councillor Dorian said. Yeah, I'm not disputing the work that Wibberton Football Club do, but we are BTAC, not... Sorry about that. Yeah, we, we are BTAC, not Boston Borough Council. So I think it's only right that we donate £500 and they approach with it in Paris. So I'd like to second Councillor Dorian's proposal. Thank you, Martin. Right. Are there any... Uh, all those uh, in favour then, please? If you want to do the roll call, Karen, please. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, I will call the roll call in alphabetical order and if members could answer for, against or abstain, please. Councillor Alison Austin. Four. <coughs> Was that four, Councillor Austin? Four. Thank you. Councillor Alan Bell. Four. Councillor Anton Dunny. Four. Councillor Anne Dorian. Four. Councillor Vivian Edge. Four. Councillor Deborah Evans. Four. Chairman, Councillor Goodale. Four. Councillor Martin Griggs. Four. Councillor Neil Hasty. Councillor Hasty. Four. Thank you, sir. Uh, now I'm Councillor Howard. Councillor Brian Rush. Four. Councillor Yvonne Stevens. Four. Councillor Colin Woodcock. Four. And Councillor Stephen Woodliffe. Four. That's unanimous, Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. <clears throat> Our second report of the evening uh, is page 15 on the agenda. Um, yeah, just turn. And there's a review of the 2021 events. We're looking forward to 21-22 events programme. And it's presented by Mrs. Christina Willoughby, our 10 Centre Services Manager. Christine, to present, please. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I'm a bit disappointed to be bringing you a review of 2020 events. There's um, not a lot's really happened this year. Um, we were very excited in the events team when we got the BTAC support for giving an approval to increase the events programme. However, about a week before our first planned event, um, COVID-19 took hold and since then we've not been able to run any events. So um, that's been a bit unfortunate. However, we are currently planning events from September. Um, moving forwards and working closely with the Safety Advisor Group, Lincolnshire Event Safety Partnership and monitoring all government guidance in order to seek further clarity on what we're able to deliver for our future events this year. 
We are aware of several Christmas events that have been cancelled around the area. However, at this stage, we're not in a position that we feel we need to do that for Boston. Um, so that brings me into recommendation two, um, as Councillor Goodale said, on page 15. Um, sorry, I've got quite a few recommendations tonight. Um, so this is to reallocate budget um, from, we budgeted last year to spend 14 and a half thousand um, of the agreed budget um, on Christmas. We'd like to look at moving that up to 22,000 and enabling us to put a four day Christmas event on. So we'd still do the Christmas market that we've done on the Thursday. And then we'd look to expand that into four days and have like the little wooden hut chalets in Bargate Green Car Park. We're looking at about 20 of them with a small fairground ride um, and the possibility to get some food in there. Um, we are aware that this is very fluid at the minute with COVID and obviously there's been local lockdowns in some areas. So anything we are looking and planning to do with 2021, we are making sure that all the contracts enable us to roll it into 20, sorry, in 2020, enable us to roll the contracts into 2021. So therefore, yes, there is some time lost in our planning, but I would rather us be in a position to plan and do something. And then if we weren't able to move into 2021. We've also been working closely with the Christmas in Boston team and part of this increased spend would enable the testing of the lighting columns that needs to be done um, and it is required this year to enable them to put the Christmas lights up. Moving into recommendation three, this is to reallocate 13 and a half thousand of this year's existing budget to bring a fire garden to form a celebration for the Illuminate event. So in previous years, we've worked with Transported and put the Illuminate Parade on. And last year, we put a fire garden on Bargate Green, which was proved hugely successful. And we got some really good feedback about this. We're then looking to deliver this in Central Park, where we've got a bit more space, where we can social distance a bit more um, and put some more steps in place to be COVID-19 secure. And we're also looking to expand on the Illuminate side of things um, and with the wider Pilgrim's Roots group and create a campaign called Hashtag One Small Candle, where we'll be encouraging every household to put a non-flammable candle in their window as a sign of hope and celebration for Illuminate 2020. This will be alongside a campaign with community lanterns of 1,620, which will be displayed across the town. And that will replace the parade for this year alone. Recommendation four reallocates five and a half thousand pounds of the re-existing budget to do a Letters to Santa project projection. The events team was provided information by one of the borough's elected members and we felt we'd bring this forward again just trying to put something different on because we fully accept that the Christmas market we've done previously cannot be as it is this year with Covid so we need to we're just trying to sort of mix it up a little bit. Recommendation five considers the planned programme of events for next year, so 2021-22. Um, I've put in the report there, and it, as per last year, where I gave three options to the committee, I've done the same again this year. All three options will provide a Boston show, and we're looking at working with Boston Bike Night and also the Classic Car Club to potentially create a four-day event in the town. I'm really trying to do this as a COVID sort of a celebration of the town and after COVID sort of celebration next year. Um, the party in the park that was planned for the 25th of July this year has all the costs that were associated with that have been rolled into the 24th of July 2021 um, and that's included in all these three options that I'm putting forward. So option one which is outlined on page 25 in the report offers a full range of events very similar to what we would have run this year um, and also includes the four day Christmas market in the chalets um, with an increase in the budget of £22,000. So it's an additional £22,000 I'll be asking from yourselves. Option two in the report outlined on page 27 has removed the four day Christmas market element, but left in the other events, including the free children's activities and the Boston show. And that would be an increase in budget of £9,700. Option three outlined on page 29 is a limited programme and no free community events, but does include the Boston show and the party in the park event still. This option does also remove any funding that we were able to give to any of the Boston big local events if we are successful in gaining funding from them. Just outlined in that recommendation six, um, which I think was agreed last year, is that obviously if, if we choose option one, which is the 22,000, because it's over 10,000 pound, it does need to go through and be noted at cabinet. 
In addition to the events we'll be putting on outlined in this programme, we will be applying for Boston Big Local funding again to be able to put the beach, the 1940s and hopefully some health themed events on. And we're also working with Transported to put an Arts Council grant in to expand and develop Illuminate 2020. Um, and we'll also look at any additional funding opportunities we come across. We will continue to request and ask for sponsorship, but we have obviously been very wary of this at the minute because I appreciate that a lot of businesses have fallen on hard times with COVID, so we don't feel it's appropriate to go knocking on doors saying, can, can we sort of have some money to support? But where we can, we will sort of outreach to them people. So that's an overview of my report. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Christina. <clears throat> Um, obviously, there are a number of recommendations within this report, um, which my advice will need to be taken individually. So um, um, we, we will have quite a few votes on this. Um, so, but can I ask any members if they wish to comment on, on, on any of Christina's report, please? Councillor Evans, please. Thank you. Right, I'm here, but I'm not coming to screen, I don't think. Can you hear me? You, I can see you on here. Oh, lovely. <laughs> um, I think this is an, an excellent report. I think it's been the most difficult time for anybody starting events. It's, there's never been anything like it. So um, I'm really impressed at um, the ideas and I, I think this is excellent and I, I would like to support most of the report. I think it's superb. Well done, Christina. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Evans. Any, uh, any more speakers? Yeah, we have a number of speakers, Chairman. The next registered is Councillor Yvonne Stevens, please. Thank you, Councillor Stevens. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I like what I've seen or that's been presented this evening. The only bit I don't like and I won't support is the audio visual projection show. Um, I think it's expensive. Um, I don't like it because unless you're there at that moment when it's been shown, um, you'll see it, but once it's finished, it's gone. And that's money down the drain to me. I would soon have something that could be there for everybody to look at. So I won't be supporting this, but apart from everything else, well done, thank you. Thank Our you, next Mark. speaker is Councillor Alison Austin, please. Councillor Austin, please. Thank you, oh, is my video as well. Um, thank you. Nice please. Right, thank you. Um, Yes, um, Christina, thank you very much and all the rest of your events team who've put this report together. It really is excellent. And thinking back to last year, I think that fire, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, I can't think of it, quite, quite, I mean, but, but that, that fire event on um, Bargate Green was absolutely amazing. And, you know, as I walked around that for about the second or third time, I got to talk to people who come from all over the place, and I think they were bowled over by it. Um, at some previous um, or some other occasion, I've been at a presentation. I think it might have even been given by Polly um, as part of a presentation she made to the Heritage Forum or something like that um, about Mayflower and the Illuminate um, uh, event. And I believe our Illuminate event is far superior and more spectacular than all the others in the country. So, you know, well done to Transport It and yes, keep on with it, please. Um, I have a, it's not a prejudicial interest other than the fact that I was fortunate to be mayor the year that that st first started and was invited down to the very first Illuminate parade in Plymouth. And then after that, we've always had one here. So that doesn't prejudice me in the least. It just says um, I was lucky to be there at that particular time and keep, keep up the good work. Thank you. And I, I don't see any reason not to have the um, 
which was Sound of the Light Show, um, if it gives pleasure to some people, perhaps it can be run more than once during the evening, if that's a possibility. But certainly I'd be, I mean, I'd be happy to support all that's in um, uh, option, option one. Thank you. Thank you, Alison. Our next speaker, Councillor Martin Grooks, please. Councillor Grooks, please. Yeah, um, I think, you know, it's not a good position that we have to cancel all the events. And I think many of our residents rely on those events to, you know, not get them through the year, but it's a highlight of their year. Um, from my point of view, I couldn't support option two and three because I, I, I couldn't justify the removing of free community events. To me, that's more important than the big events. You know, many of our residents struggle financially to go on holidays and whatnot and things like the beach event or the free days out are things that i'm a massive advocate for so if if other members weren't minded to support option one then i would move an amendment to say that we support none of those and support the community events over the big events um that being said i think you know from my point of view I, i'm more than happy to um support option one and I think many of our residents will be happy that after you know, such a year where everyone's plans are in turmoil, it'd be really nice to come out swinging and say, you know, look at all the things you can do in Boston. So I'd, I'd like to move that we um, go with option one, although I would also like some extra feedback from Christina on how the um, projection event will work because obviously we all know the year we had projectors for Christmas it was below par to say the least yeah it was Christina if you'd like to come back please yeah so Councillor Griggs I'm just this is a company that as I say contacted uh, one of our members and then, then they passed it on to us it is only a one night so the projectors we had before were obviously in replacement of um lights um, so this is literally one, it's sort of a featured of one night and they come and to project, as I say, most of it's a, a letter to Santa. So the idea is that children have an opportunity to bring a letter and they will post their Christmas list into a, into a bar, into a magical post box. And then you can watch it as the elves deliver it and it comes from Santa and into the <coughs> North Pole. Um, so it is more of an experience for them. It's about an hour long animation, um, oh, sorry, animation. Um, and also, you know, just gives, it'll just create a bit of a buzz around Christmas and we were going to tie this in. Um, as I say, the date is quite fluid, but we were thinking about tying this in with the four day Christmas market. So we'll be able to sort of have some carol singers. Um, you'll be able to maybe get a hot chocolate or a mulled wine while you're in the four day Christmas market and we'll watch this onto one of the buildings as well. Um, but the children will be, yeah, you'll be able to post it into this magic post box and the mail room scene will appear and then they, they'll get sort of flown around, not to give the magic away too much if we've got any kids watching. But yeah, the sort of there is some more pictures I can send across if, if you are interested. Thank yeah, you. If, if you wouldn't mind, Christina, that'd be fantastic. And from what you've said, having small children myself, and that sounds absolutely fantastic. So obviously, if the pictures look good, I think great move forward with it. Thank you, Councillor Griggs. Our next speaker is Councillor Brian Rush, please. Thank you, Councillor Rush, please. Uh, thank you, Mr Chairman. I'm assuming that you can hear me. Yes. I don't see you raising your eyebrows, so I assume that you're, we're still in touch. I have to say that I actually, of all the events that Christine has mentioned, I have to be honest and say that the, the Christmas in Boston one is the one that really grabs my imagination. And I think it seems to grab the imagination of everyone else. It's what you call a real true community event. It's it, it's no cost particularly of the of the uh, to the spectators, if that's the right word. And I do think that we have now excelled ourselves, and the team that we've got together is absolutely superb. I mean, they really do know what they're doing and where they're going with this thing. And all credit to the whole team, including Christina, that that what we get is something that Boston can really be proud of. There was one thing that Christina mentioned was something about the, the the testing of some equipment. Is that right, Christina? Could you just elaborate on that for me, please? 
Yeah, so the Christmas in Boston team put some lights. Um, they tend to be there. I don't that they're sort of big sort of globes that they've made. Um, and then also the string lights that they do from lamppost to lamppost. They have to get um, tested. Lincolnshire County Council um, require testing of them um, every two years because obviously they're a lamppost. They're not built for Christmas lights. It's, it, it serves a purpose as a lamppost. And who, and who does that? Do you mind telling me who, who, who does? Do we have a local contractor or someone... It's not done by ourselves. It's all organised by Christmas in Boston um, and done through there. But obviously they've come. Normally they are funded by um, a lot of the local businesses and this year they've not been able to get as much money behind them. So part of this money would go towards covering that for them. And, and is it an expensive part of the of the uh, provision? Um, yeah, yeah. It's, um, it's I think about £100, £200 a lamppost they, they, they've sort of oh, quoted really? to yeah to, to get it done so yeah it can because they have to it's not just a case of doing that they have to like ultrasound into the ground as well i understand so just tell me this i'm sorry mr chairman if you don't mind um, i'm just wondering about how far how, how what the responsibility is really i'm always mindful that we make sure these things are are public safe if that's not too much of a cliche um because of all the the, the amount of people that gets there I, I think we need to make sure we're ultra safe and i'm sure you will do that but I wonder if there's if we examine options or whether we just have a a, a specific provider. They, from from our point of view, I'd be looking to transfer the money over to them, and then they'd pay the provider, and then we'd get a copy of the paperwork, which is what they've. I mean, we've not paid for it before, but previously they've sent us copies of the testing to say it's been done from a from a safety point of view. Um, we just sort of leave it to them to source a contractor. And get the works done unless it was unless BTEC wanted us to source that ourselves, but it would normally be something they would sort themselves. All right, well that's fair enough. Now I have to say that I'm I well just going back then, Mr. Chairman, to to the the general uh, conversations. I don't know who it was that mentioned it, maybe uh, Councillor Stevens, who mentioned first the the graphics on the buildings. And frankly, I think we could spend that money a lot better in another way because. Not because the product isn't a good one, but I don't think it lends itself very well to uh, that kind of ap atmosphere. I think I think we don't get enough impact from it, and it's it's quite quick, it's quite expensive for how quick it is, and I think we could use that money in another way, really, especially when we have things like this testing or whatever, or even just reinvested in the in the the quality, if you like, Christina. I hope you'll forgive that word, the quality of the event, because. Honestly, I think it's, it's building our reputation. And for that matter alone, I would be supporting this event. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Rush. Our next speaker is Councillor Anne Dorian, Chairman. Councillor Dorian, please. Thank you, Chair. Uh, first of all, um, I'm just going to pick up on the, uh, the illuminations, the light show that Councillor Rush and Councillor Stevens spoke of. It was in your pack. It looks like that. Uh, and for you, Councillor Griggs, it's, it's in your pack. I'm sure your children would love seeing this. We can't compare it. We simply can't compare it to the projector that Councillor Skinner bought a few years ago that was absolutely rubbish. This is really high quality stuff. This is a, a, a projection show that our children will remember for the rest of their lives. So I would wholeheartedly ask you to have a look at that and, and, and I'm sure you would support it. Secondly, I'd like to say that I will second Councillor Griggs's proposal that we go for option one, Mr Chair. I think the Christmas in Boston is the best event we do by a country mile. I think the Christmas in Boston team, who are all volunteers, who are all professional people in their own right, give their own time for weeks on end, and they put this event together for our benefit with the support of Christina and Phil. And it is stupendous. It's nothing short of stupendous. And we should be really proud of those volunteers. And I really feel it's about time the council found a way to recognise what they do. And they're not the only volunteers in the community by a long shot, but we need to find a way that we can recognise these volunteers and uh, because we keep on wanting them to do more and be bigger and better every year. I had the benefit of um, spending half a day with Christina recently when um, we were both volunteer street ambassadors. And um, 
I, I'm not going to blow smoke up your behind, Christina, because we had very challenging conversations, didn't we? I was very impressed with your work, but I challenged you a great deal. And I'm happy, if you if you don't mind me uh, sparing your blushes, I'm going to tell the BTAC uh, councillors that they're looking at a chief executive in the making. Christina's now decided to do a master's degree, and I'm highly delighted, supported by Phil, her line manager. And if she keeps on delivering stuff like this, then you will go from strength to strength, Christina. Um, I appreciate the work you do. I would support option one. And do you know what? I'm going to say this, Mr Chair. We are not going to exist very soon. I know we're going to look at the, um, the town council thing, but as a borough council, we're not going to exist very soon. I'd take that 20 million out reserves and I'd give at least a million to Christina and Phil and say, do your best, put on every event you can imagine in this town and let's really give our uh, community something to enjoy after COVID. You know, as a school teacher, we're looking very closely at how we can support young children in their mental health. A lot of us have got big gardens. We haven't been cooked up. That's not the same for a lot of young families with young children. And so if we can give them something to look forward to and something spectacular over Christmas, I think it's the least we can do. And after all, I've said it before, it's their money. It's council taxpayers' money, and it, we are blessed in being able to have a say over how it is spent. So I'm going to second Councillor Griggs's proposal that we go for option one, and uh, I would encourage you all to support that. Thank you, Mr Chair. Thank you, Anne. Um, Our next speaker is Councillor Stephen Woodliffe, please. And Councillor Woodliffe, please. Yes. Can you see me? Yes. You can see me. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, right. Uh, well, Chairman, um, I've heard what everybody else has to say. But of course, last year, we all voted for the um, option one, didn't we? 22,000. And then the cabinet yeah. turned around and said, get lost, didn't they? Or words had effect. Well, you would know. You went to cabinet to find out, didn't you? They wouldn't sure tell you why, would they? <laughs> so, I I information. sorry, pardon? They said they wanted more information. Oh, the really? Breakdown, I believe. Really? Well, they were given that, weren't they? You gave them all that. Well, there you go. That, that, that's, that's my problem. I wonder whether we could split this into three nine nine thousands and run it through that way. Then the, then the, the cabinet would have to uh, have a say in it, would they? <laughs> um, it all depends on who's in charge, doesn't it? But um, I guess. no, sorry. I guess. Yeah. I guess. <laughs> um, the only one I think I probably have a problem with, and it's. It's just about delivering letters to Santa. And I have a problem with it because we're going to enter very harsh times in the near future. In fact, we, we know that. Unemployment is rapidly rising as a result of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic and other things as well. And I hope we're not going to be putting too much pressure on parents because children won't understand that parents can't deliver perhaps the things they might like for Christmas. You know, pressure, parents are under great pressure anyway, and there will be even more pressure in, in the years to come, but certainly in this Christmas coming up. So it's all very well sending letters to Santa, but if Santa doesn't deliver the bicycle, the computer, and the, I don't know, whatever else is, model railway, in my day it would have been anyway, um, there might be a problem. So I do wonder, I do worry about that. We've got to be careful that we don't put parents under even more pressure at a time when, well, people may be unemployed or whatever, can't, can't pay the rent. So or even a mortgage, whatever. So I am, I am, I'm worried about that aspect of it. It's all very well to have these things, there's promotions and so on, but it puts images in people's minds and images can lead then to um, expectations and then expectations that can't be delivered. So I think we need to be very, very careful about that. But if, you know, I'm, I'm happy to go along with members really. If they want to um, you know, go for option one, I won't oppose it, but we know what happens next, don't we? It goes to cabinet. And then it all depends on them. So perhaps Mr. G Martin Griggs perhaps gives an assurance, you know, being a cabinet member, that it will go through. Hmm? Perhaps he will prepare to bring him to the screen and give him the promise and he'll get it through. <laughs> Thank you, Jamie. Well, I have to say, uh, Councillor Woodliffe, Councillor Griggs was very supportive last time when I went to the cabinet. So um, as were as as were the B, uh, cabinet members that are on BTEC. So, um, we, we will see how we go. Whatever the decision is, will be whatever it is, won't it? It will Which be. Is... Yeah. Thank you, Chairman. Anyway, yeah, I'll vote for yes. it. Thank you. Our next speaker is Councillor Colin Woodcock, please, Chairman. 
Mr. Chairman. Um, well, Christina, um, you do a sterling job. With, there's no doubt about that whatsoever. But in some instances, I'm, I'm just a little bit of a devil's advocate. My only concerns are that at the moment, uh, things are okay. How do we go on about policing and uh, social distancing in these events? Because I think if you go around town at the moment, some people are just not playing ball at all. They're totally ignoring it. I think that's just, uh, just absolutely disgraceful. I like that. Um, but it does just worry me a little bit. Uh, also, the fact that the government just could wave their magic wand and say, you're not doing this now, or you can't do this. And it is a bit of a worry. So I, I have a little bit of a problem with the social distancing, et cetera. But I did ask my daughter, uh, I said, Sophie, what would you do about uh, going to all the events? She says, I'd put Joe and her, that's my grandson, he's only one and a half. And she said, I'll play ball, I'll social uh, distance. And she says, and you're coming with me. So I said, I will come to all the events. <laughs> yeah, I, I think you've done a great job, but it's just that spectre in the background of people who are not playing ball in what we want them to do. I don't know if you've got any comment on that. Yeah, I mean, obviously we'll have to look at increasing steward and security numbers on the day. Um, and we are also, we are very keen, as I say, to try and make this year, we want to do something, but try and make it very different to what we did in um, 2019, because I don't think we will be able to do what we did in 2019. So we want to try and adapt it slightly. So that might be looking at different layouts potentially sort of one way system round through the park and in through the fire garden. So we are, we've got sort of ideas um, going on behind the scenes. Um, and as I say, if the government wave the magic wand and say we can't do any of this, we are sort of um, rolling everything up so that it will support us in 2021. So our, our time and effort, I must say, obviously, I completely understand what we had to do for COVID, but it was absolutely devastating when we got the message that we wouldn't be able to do everything because we put so much hard work in. Um, but this is, this is what, what happens and public safety is our main priority so we will work towards and getting the message out there um encouraging maybe the mask wearing um, and put what mitigation factors we can into it really but we are relying on people to work with us to make the event as safe as possible well if that's the case then did we ought to consist uh, factory in a little bit of extra funding to input to enable you to implement that as you as you would like to see it done I'm, I'm, I'm never going to refuse. I'm never going to refuse extra money if you were to uh, to enhance and develop our events. Um, I think that um, what we've sort of budgeted, we are quite happy that we can. That's that's the budget I've put forward with some of the mitigation. Obviously, if the government turned around and said that all of a sudden we have to put, I'm just thinking off the top of my head. This isn't something I've read anywhere that we have to put a hand sanitizer station in every hundred meters then that would be potentially an issue for us because that is something we haven't budgeted for at the minute. So yeah, I suppose maybe um, if there could be some sort of mitigation fund, if that is available, I don't know, but that we have planned for sort of the extra security, put her in a one-way system in and things like that. We have sort of planned for that sort of thing. It is just any extras that may come through. Yeah, so you've got, you've considered virtually everything you, you can put into place at this point in time. It was, at the bottom of the line, we don't know where we're going. We just have to Suck it and see, really, I suppose. Yeah. Anyway, thank you very much for that. Darling. Our next speaker is Councillor Anton Danny. Chairman, thank you. Thank you. Councillor Danny, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, thank you, Christina, for your report. It's very interesting. I will just come to Santa Projection, which is five thousand pound and half for one hour I, I think it's a bit too dear for that price probably what i will suggest we can buy probably two, two projectors and we can put them on timer and they can work probably for 10 15 days before christmas and it will be great because i think projectors now they don't cost a lot of money so five thousand and half i think is a bit dear uh, I, the other thing which is what i want to say i think this year and because of the hard times with the covid 19 I think we should give something back to the residents of Boston. I think we should have some great shows and we should deliver a great Christmas because this year has been very strange, very difficult for a lot of people, a lot of kids, a lot of teenagers, parents. I mean, 
the whole society has been touched. And to give something back, it's the least we can do. And I think all of us as counselors, we should work towards that goal. We should deliver and we should work with the officers and we should come even with better ideas. I don't think so we should put the money uh, first. We should think, of course, about our financials, but I think we should work harder and deliver better. I will come back to the projections, which is the war, I think, uh, 2016 Christmas. And I would agree with Councillor Dorian because I'm still in shock because we agree about the projections to be uh, in town center and the BBC is supposed to own that projection, projectors, but we never own them. I don't know what's happened to them. It's a mystery. They have been dissolved somewhere and we lost the projection and we lost the money. And, and I wasn't happy about uh, the outcome of that Christmas. I think this time we should work all harder and make sure that our town get the Christmas they deserve. Uh, I agree about option one. I think it's one of the best options. And I think it will be the right way to deliver a new Christmas. And thank you, Christina, once again for the report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Danny. Our next speaker is Councillor Martin Griggs, please, Chairman. Yeah, Councillor Griggs, please. Did you want to come in, Christina, before Councillor Griggs? Yeah, sorry, Councillor Griggs. Yeah, um, thank you, Chairman. I just wanted to um, confirm with Councillor Danny that when the projections were done in 2016, they weren't purchased by the borough. They were on a lease um, scale with a company. So we didn't buy them. They haven't, it, it wasn't borough money they were bought with. We don't own them. We, they were brought in through a lease scheme um, and the company that they were leased off owned them. I just wanted to confirm that. Um, the same with this company. We would pay them that figure. We wouldn't own them. We literally pay them that figure. They come in, they deliver it, and then they take the contents away. Thank you for that, Christina. Thank, thank you, apologies. Christina. Yeah, um, I just wanted to come back on what Councillor Woodliffe says. Um, obviously, when it goes to Cabinet, I won't be taking part in the discussion at Cabinet because that would be improper, or at least I won't be voting on it in Cabinet, but I will definitely advocate, advocate it going through. And I think the confusion last time came from, obviously, the portfolio holder at the time left the council and therefore couldn't go through all the stuff he'd worked with with Christina to you know, update Cabinet on from his point of view. Um, just as a side point, and I know they've included the um, project mock-up underneath the report, but I suggest you all go have a look at the Double Take Projections website. And it's, there's lots of companies that do similar and a lot of the music festivals I go to use this sort of technology. But having looked through some of the services they've already provided to other people, I think it's fair to say that the pictures are most definitely an accurate representation of what we could see. But it's definitely worth having a look on their website for everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Martin. Our final speaker at this point in the proceedings is Councillor Brian Rush, Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Brian Rush, please. You're on mute, Councillor Rush. Yeah, I'm unmuted now, Councillor Chairman. Well, first of all, I think I have to make some kind of, a, well, a bit of an apology, really, based on what I've just heard tonight uh, and, of course, this evening. And, of course, it is, it, it's instrumental, this kind of um, re-examination of the past, etc. I actually didn't want to have those graphics because my memory serves me pretty badly at the best of times. But I seem to remember that the one um, that we had some years back, I think someone says 2016, forgive me if I've got that wrong, where the graphics on buildings were a complete and utter disaster as far as the visuality of them is concerned. And I also, I think there was a lot of confusion around what Councillor Griggs or someone said about whether they were bought, leased, borrowed or whatever. But I think um, this, this particular uh, group need to be very, very careful about what we agree to and what we don't agree to. And I think that Christina and team are very good at what they do. So I've got no doubts there, but I really do want us to be very careful about, and, and they call it dotting the I's and crossing the T's. If we're going to do this thing, we want to do a really quality event like everyone has, is obviously advocating, 
we need to make sure that what we're signing up to, we know what it is and what we get for our money. So that's the first thing. And I do have to apologize because I actually did get those graphics that Councillor Dorian flashed in front of the screen. And I have to be honest and say, I almost dismissed them on the basis of past history. But I am convinced. I think that much brighter and better people than I have obviously evaluated it probably better again than I. So I'm prepared to support that if that is part of the package. Because frankly, Boston has kind of got a bit of a reputation for this now, and I want it to get better and better. So I'm with it, Mr. Chairman, and I vote for whatever the best thing is for this town. Thank you very much. Thank you, Brian. Chairman, we do have more speakers. Councillor Alan Bell, please. Uh, Councillor Bell, please. Yes, thank you, Chair. I'm there somewhere. I just Hi. want to reiterate what everybody else has said. It, it's got to be option one for me. Uh, we've got to give something back to the community. It has been a horrendous year for everybody. And as my one of my colleagues says, Councillor Griggs, I think, he said that most of our residents will not be able to afford to go away anyway. And the fear of the second wave is there anyway, if they can afford to go away. So I would definitely go for option one. And I want to thank Christina and Phil for a fantastic package. It's incredible. In this time that we've never heard of before, and I think to put this package together is amazing. I really do. So yeah, it's, for me, option one, I'll be quiet now, I'll get off my soapbox, but thank you very much. Thank you, Alan. Next Councillor speaker, Neil Hastie, please, Chairman. Thank you. Councillor Hastie, please. Hi, it's Jeff going on what Christina said about sponsorship. A lot of the local businesses had to close down during um, Corona. I was wondering if there's any way we can offer free advertising around the Christmas events to all local businesses within the borough. Um, I don't really think that's a decision that Christina can make, but um, I don't know. I, I, I think that a lot of people sponsor the lights, don't they? Christina, what, what, what's your take on this? Yeah, that's the only thing we'd have to be mindful of is if people have, um, I'd have to speak to Christmas in Boston because if people have paid money um, towards the Christmas in Boston team and they've paid and then we're doing it for free, there might just be a bit of a crossover there. But it's certainly something I can explore and look into. Um, I suppose the only other thing we need to think of is, is how we're going to do that advertising. Because um, if we were doing it, for example, on a, we had a big screen last year. If we were doing it on there, it would be free for that content, but we're probably not looking at a screen this year. So if we were looking at banners, there's obviously a cost with getting them banners printed. Um, I mean, it's, not a, it's not a no, but I just need to explore it a bit more to see how best we could work it. It was just an idea about what was mm. said earlier on, that was all. Yeah, no, and I, I think it's a great, a great idea and a great opportunity to support those local businesses. Um, it's just how best to do it without upsetting those that may have paid and to trying to make it fair and equal. I'll have, um, I'll have a think about it and thrash some ideas out and speak to the Christmas in Boston team um, to see if we've got any paid sponsors behind it. Thanks, Al. Thank you, Thank you Neil. We have one further speaker, Chairman Councillor Anton Danny, please. Well, thank you, Karen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All I want to say, just to respond to Councillor Hasty, uh, the BBC is already supporting local businesses by advertising them for free. So anybody who wants advertising, they can just contact the BBC and they can put them on. That's all I want to say. Thank you, Councillor Danny. Uh, uh, are there any more speakers, Karen? Non-registered Chairman, thank you. Thank you very much then. As I said earlier on, there are a number of votes which individually need to be taken. Um, I think we can actually take the uh, the first recommendation um, that the um, the situation, that the note the outcome of the 2020 events programme, I think we can take that as read. Uh, and I'll move to the second recommendation and it's the, that the committee relocates existing budget to the 2020 Christmas market event, increasing the budget from £14,500 to £22,000 to enable a four-day Christmas event. Um, 
Can I have a proposal and a seconder for those items, please? Councillor Hastie has raised his hand. Councillor Hastie, do you wish to move? Yeah, can I move it, please? Thank you. Councillor Griggs is indicating to second. Do you wish to second, Councillor Griggs? Yep, yeah, happy to second that, Mr Chairman. Thank you very Thank much you very indeed. Much. Can we go Thank through the call, roll call then, please, Karen? Thank you, Chairman. Members, I will call the vote alphabetically. Please answer for, against or abstain. Councillor Alison Austin. Councillor Austin, you are self-muted. Can we go back to Councillor Austin? We got I a lot. Better, yeah. Councillor Alan Bell. Four. Councillor Anton Danny. Four. Councillor Anne Dorian. Four. Councillor Vivian Edge. She's with Councillor Dot. We'll go back. Austin. Yes. Councillor Deborah Evans. Oh. Councillor Goodale. Oh. Councillor Martin Griggs. Oh. Councillor Neil Hasty. Oh. Councillor Brian Rush. Oh. Oops. Four. Councillor Brian Rush. Thank you, sir. Councillor Von Stevens. Four. Councillor Colin Woodcock. Four. Councillor Stephen Woodliffe. Thank you. We'll go back to Councillor Alison Austin. Uh, oh, there you go. Four. Thank you. And to Councillor Vivian Edge. Oh, four. Thank you. That's unanimous, Chairman. Thank you. If you'd like to move to the second of the third recommendation. Thank you, Karen. The third recommendation is that the committee relocates £13,500 of existing budget to an illuminated fire garden for the Christmas 2020 event. Um, do I have a proposal and a seconder, please? Councillor Griggs is indicating. Do you wish to move, Councillor Griggs? Happy to move that. I can you, second Council it. Councillor Danny to second. Thank you, Councillor Danny. Thank you. We'll move, we'll move to the Good vote. Voting. Yeah. Councillor Alison Austin. Four. Councillor Alan Bell. Four. Councillor Anton Danny. Four. Councillor Anne Dorian. Four. Councillor Vivian Edge. Four. Councillor Deborah Evans. Four. Chairman. Four. Councillor Martin Griggs. Four. Councillor Neil Hasty. Four. Councillor Brian Rush. Four. Councillor Yvonne Stevens. Four. Councillor Colin Woodcock. Councillor Woodcock. Four. Thank you, sir. Councillor <laughs> Stephen Woodliffe. Four. Again, that's unanimously carried, Chairman. Thank you, Karen. The fourth recommendation is that the committee relocates £5,500 of the existing budget to uh, a Letters to Santa project, that's the protection project, as is in uh, Appendix F, that's the uh, the uh, package that uh, Councillor Doreen had hand, well, held up in front of the screen. I see more members have seen it. Do I have a proposal and a seconder for that item, please? Councillor Bell is showing to Yes, to I'll move, propose Chairman. it, Chair. Councillor Griggs to second. Happy to second. Thank you very much indeed. We'll move to the vote. Councillor okay. Alison Austin. Four. Councillor Alan Bell. Four. Councillor Anton Danny. Four. Councillor Anne Dorian. Four. Councillor Vivian Edge. Four. Councillor Deborah Evans. Four. Chairman. Four. Councillor Martin Griggs. Four. Councillor Neil Hasty. Four. Councillor Brian Rush. Four. Councillor Yvonne Stevens. Against. Councillor Colin Woodcock. Four. Councillor Stephen Woodliffe. Four. That's clearly carried, Chairman. Thank you. 
Thanks, Karen. Uh, the fifth recommendation is the committee considers the planned programme of events for 21-22 as detailed in the report uh, and the selection of either option one, option two or option three. I believe we have a proposal and a seconder for option one already, Karen. Is that correct? We do. Councillor Griggs moved it and Councillor Dorian seconded it, Chairman. Do you wish me to take it to the vote for option one? Yes, please. Thank you. You're voting on option one, committee. Thank you. Councillor Alison Austin. For. Councillor Alan Bell. For. Councillor Anton Danny. For. Councillor Anne Dorian. For. Councillor Vivian Edge. For. Councillor Deborah Evans. For. Chairman. For. Councillor Martin Griggs. For. Councillor Neil Hasty. For. Councillor Brian Rush. For. Councillor Yvonne Stevens. For. Councillor Colin Woodcock. For. And Councillor Stephen Woodliffe. For. Thank you. That's unanimously carried, Chairman. Thank you. Thank you very much, Karen. Um, thank you, members. Um, the next item on the agenda, uh, agenda item three, is on page 45, and it's the setting of a town council. Um, Um, it's well down for me to present um, as I brought it the last time. Um, effectively, well, the report I've just circulated the report we had last time. Um, we didn't come to a conclusion. Um, we had a very good debate on it. I know it was a while ago, but we did have a, 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 a good debate on it. I think with some of the um, things that are, are being bundled about now about unitary authorities and the like, even to some degree the alliance with East Lindsay District Council that we really need to seriously look at setting up a town council. Um, it is my view that if we do that um, ourselves, um, at least we get the town council we want, rather than probably having one imposed on as if there is a unitary or just being left or cast adrift. Um, I, I won't say too much on this because I think all the recommendation is asking for is that uh, we, uh, we task officers uh, to explore all the issues and implications involved in setting up a town council and report back to this committee to consider it. Um, uh, I will move that from the chair, uh, as chair, uh, and I wait for uh, comments, please. I'll second that have... motion. Thank you, Councillor Bell. I've got three councillors showing you with their hands up. Councillor Giggs, do you wish to speak? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Councillor Bell jumped and beat me to it. I was going to second that. I mean, last time the issue of town council was raised, I think I spoke out against it. I think now it would be completely remiss of us to not look into it, especially with you know, potential LGR reviews um, coming that we may have limited control over. I'm sure every member on BTAC doesn't want the family silverware vanishing to somewhere that we can't have an influence on it. So I think absolutely right that we task officers to go find out more about becoming a town council or creating a town council. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Griggs. I have Councillor Anne Dorian wishing to address the meeting, Chairman. Thank you, Karen. Councillor Dorian. Thank you, Chair. I didn't realise I was next there. Okay, yeah. Um, sorry, I was just having a bit of tea. Sorry, Chair. Um, Why not? <laughs> I agree with um, Councillor Griggs. I actually attended the meetings on um, uh, um, setting up a town council and I voted against at the time because I didn't think it was necessary uh, and it was a duplication. Now, however, like I said in the last item, we are not going to exist. We are literally not going to exist as borough councillors within two years, three years max. Um, and so I'd be really keen to explore this now. You have my full support, Chair, and I know it's been a passion of yours, and I, I, um, I admire passion in councillors a great deal. Um, what I'd be really keen on is to take Councillor Scribby's comment to the literal sense. We don't want to lose the, the family silverware, but we literally have a lot of silverware um, and porcelain and the mayor's chains and everything that belong to the people of Boston. And so, so for that reason, I'd be really keen that officers bring back a report on how we preserve that, how we retain that for the people of Boston. I would also like to know how the finances would work 
in terms of if a devolution deal is done, um, either Martin Hill or a, a another elected mayor is going to get a huge chunk of money, hundreds of millions, I believe, from government uh, for doing that. Um, but I'd like to know what happens to the 20 million in reserves at Boston Borough Council. OK, so that is Boston Borough Council taxpayers money. And I would like to if we if we can't have it for the town council, then let's get it spent. Let's spend on the people of Boston. Let's support small businesses. Let's give out grants that don't have to be paid back. I don't care. It has to be spent on the people of Boston and not dissipated into East Lindsay or dissipated into another district council. We cannot let that money vanish. Um, in addition, I'd also urge uh, officers to consider where any town council might meet. Would it still be West Street? Would it be a completely different building? Uh, who knows? But those are the kind of things I'd be really interesting. And also, I will say, I know that we've got the charters from King Henry VIII, I think. Don't quote me on that. Um, but I know there's people that are far more knowledgeable than me. We've got these superb charters, uh, old scrolls, um, that they too have significant historical interests for the people of Boston and for generations to come. So all of that wrapped up in a bow needs to stay for the people of Boston, Mr. Chair. And, and I will support this uh, going forward. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. I couldn't agree more. I do have a number of speakers, Chairman. Councillor uh, Stephen Woodley, next, please. Councillor Woodley. All right, fine. Can you see me? Yes. Can you see me, Chairman? I can see you and hear you. Stephen. Well, you know where I stand, don't you, Chairman? I have fought for town council for Boston for at least six years, right going back all to the doc your documents in this report, 2013. Beyond that, actually, more than six, isn't it? Nearly ten years. Mm. I've always believed that this town, this town should have a council of its own. And um, I said almost, almost sort of everything last time at our last meeting, when of course uh, the mood was very different. Now I think reality has dawned. It was so pretty obvious even then, I think, actually, things were going to change. So we must go ahead with this as soon as possible. We must get the report from the officers as quickly as possible, in my opinion, and then set it up as quickly as we can. Otherwise, we'll find that the silver disappears. As for the, um, you know, the reserves of Boston Borough Council, well, that would be for East Lindsay or, or, or I don't know, Martin Hill, whatever, to decide. But we remember, most of it's loaned, They're, but we, we borrowed £20 million from the Public Works Loan Board, so the reserves actually aren't quite as clear as they are. Hmm? So we need to be, be careful about when we talk about um, spending the reserves. The reserves themselves come, in many respects, from borrowed money, borrowed funds. I'd like to get rid of that borrowed money right away, personally. Shove it onto Martin Hill. I'm sure he knows what to do with it, you know? But we do need to have a town council because, well, apart from the financial side of it, I do believe that there are serious issues inside the town that are not being dealt with, community issues, serious community issues. In villages, you have that structure which has existed for centuries, but we in this town have estates which are going up, my ward in particular, large estates going up, where people are really have, they have they, I think there's a real sense of, of um, an issue of identity in those, in those estates. Neighbors aren't necessarily the same as they are in a village, right? So we have major problems to deal with in this town and we need a town council to set about dealing with them. I've said too much, haven't I, Chairman? Yeah? And maybe I've been a bit too passionate, you think? Not at all, no? Stephen. Not at all, right. Well, you know I stand. You knew that to start with. You got my full support. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Our next speaker is Councillor Alison Austin. Thank you, I'm Karen. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I'm keeping myself permanently unmuted at the moment because <laughs> I have a shaky hand that always does it twice. Um, I agree entirely initially with what Councillor Griggs said. Other people have said more since. Um, never before have I thought it necessary because it would just be another layer of bureaucracy to confuse the residents. But, but, but now um, with either Devo and or Unitary, um, it is very, very important. Um, we're obviously, I think, going to need, when we've got the right stage, 
an up-to-date report because things have obviously changed since 2013. But I've just made a few quick um, comments. Um, we're going to have to decide, find out actually what is specifically belongs to the town of Boston um, rather than the wider borough, which is going to be an interesting task for someone. Um, but of course, this is going to put us on a par, I say us, the people who live within the actual town. And I've always lived two, two houses outside my ward, but it will put the residents of the town you know, on a par with residents in parish councils from then on. Um, there are a lot of other things to say, but, you know, it's been said already about the, um, all those beautiful things in the display cabinet in full council. Then we have a lot of issues to think about, like the ownership of the guild hall, someone said to me earlier today. Um, you know, there's going to be, it'll be, I hate to say, a bit like a divorce settlement, won't it? Deciding who gets what. Um, and then, of course, um, because with due respect, I have to remind the current mayor that he's not the mayor of Boston. He is the mayor, the worshipful, the mayor of the borough of Boston. And we have to see what title he'll then or she would then be permitted to have, because whether we retain borough states, um, you know, status won't be actually our decision, I don't think. I fear government probably makes that sort of decision, does it? Um, perhaps someone can tell me. Um, I tell you what I would like to do though, the current motto on the mayor's badge is serve with amity. Or amity, sorry, which I think is somewhat um, farcical really for a council. Give me any day the old motto, which was per Mare a per tarum, or I can't remember whether it was the other way around, but on land and on sea or on water. And that I think is what we really want to be, in my mind, back having as our motto. Anyway, yes, I will be supporting this. Thank you. Thank you, Alison. Our next speaker is Councillor Colin Woodcock. Thank you. Uh, just very, very quickly. I listened to Councillor Dorian, Councillor Woodliffe, and everybody else. In my opinion at the moment, I think we have to admit it, that Boston is a bit broken. And I think it's only us, the Boston people, that can mend Boston. If we are allowed to, it goes out of, out of our hands, we'll never get broken. We'll, we'll be second rate. Honestly, I'm totally 100% proud to be a Bostonian. And I totally support this. Thank you. Hello. Our next speaker is Councillor Anton Danny. Thank you, Carl. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, what I would like to say, it's already been said. Uh, uh, for me, when I choose Boston to be my town and the home for my kids and my family, my decision has been made. Boston is my home. I love to live in Boston, and I would love to see Boston better and better every day. Um, being having a small business in town, I've seen a lot of things in the streets, and I talk to a lot of people. And I know the hearts of people, the real Bostonians, they want Boston to be better, and they want it to pr progress and prosper. Uh, I think this is a great opportunity for us. It's a big step for us. I would like, as a BTAC member, to get more power and freedom to enable us to develop and plan for the town. And I would like our officers to go and explain to us probably what's the impact on our financials as BTAC, what's the administration, how it's going to be, how many employees we, we can have, um, what will be our duties towards Boston then. We have to have probably strategy, we have to have plans, we have to have our books all in order so we can deliver. Um, are we going to be independent in making our decisions? Decision making is very important. And we, if we go back, we couldn't even 
have more than 9,000 pounds. So it has to go through the cabinet. Uh, all of these things, I think we need a clear explanation from our officers and I hope they will do for us the job. And I do believe they're gonna do the job and I do believe they're gonna deliver. And I think once we have this view about how we're gonna work, because this is not just a BTAC, this is gonna be a town council. A town council, it's more than just a BTAC. And we all know that the impact could be greater. I am in favor of having a town council and that's for a long time. I am in favor of us working all together and harder each time as Councillor Woodcock stated. This is Boston, this is our town. We live in this town. We cannot let it go that way. I mean, I don't talk as a person who belongs to certain groups. We are here all independent people. We are people who live in Boston. We should care about Boston. We should go along with the success for this town. And, and at, as I said, this is a great opportunity and we shouldn't let it go because what's going on around us now, we might not have that chance probably next year. And I think it's time for us to explore and I will ask our officers to do for us a great job and give us all the detail, a detailed report about this. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Danny. Our next speaker is Councillor Brian Rush, please. Thank Councilor. you, Mr. Chairman. Um, <clears throat> a lot has been said and a lot of passion has been uh, poured out and there'll be some more from me, actually. I think it's a very sad day for Boston, to be honest. Well, maybe not the day, but it's a very sad event. I mourn the passing of what was one of the proudest boroughs we've ever, the, the, in, the, in the whole of the, the, the Lincolnshire County, I think. I think it was one second only to, to Lincoln. And here we are, scraping along the bottom. We've gone down to allowing other areas make decisions for us to, to smother us with their own regulations and their own aspirations. And this once proud town, someone has to take responsibility for where we are. And of course, yes, I want to look towards the future and I want to make the best of this town, but I never want to, people to be allowed to forget how we got here. Um, did I do something wrong there, Mr. Chairman? I got a I rather no strange idea. noise. I got a rather strange noise. I think I might have been- that was another member that made that noise, not yourself. Okay, right. Well, pardon that person. That's okay. Yeah, so, so we have to we have to look onwards and upwards, as they say. Boston has got lots and lots to offer, but I really do think that a town council is probably the only opportunity we're going to get to rebuild the reputation of this fine town. I know there are a few other members of of this council who may not be born Bostonians. But I think a lot of them have a lot of passion and a lot of love for this town. And I really do wish that the other people of the town, the born, the heritage people of this town, actually did start to think how special this town could be. And I applaud your, your idea of having a town council. I really do wish it had been 15 or 20 years ago. But we've got to make the best of what we've got. And I, I will be supporting the idea. And I just hope that somewhere along the line, we can build Boston back to being a respectable and, and powerful and, and reasonable kind of neighborhood, or sorry, neighborhood, yeah, neighborhood again, that, that, that pays the people back all of the efforts that they've put in over the years. There is a lot of people should be questioned about how we've got to this state. That's not for today. But for tomorrow, we have to say, let's not do that again. And let's build on what we've got, because that's the future for our children. And I really am sad, but I'm also excited. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thanks, Brian. Our next speaker, Chairman, is Councillor Deborah Evans. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Evans, you are muted. You're muted. 
unmute. Hi, I kept pressing it. It just wouldn't unmute. It was being yeah. temperamental. Uh, right, thank you, Chairman. Um, uh, my point of view is uh, at the last meeting, I didn't think it was a good idea. And I thought it was going to be another layer of um, bureaucracy. And I didn't see that it was the right thing to do. But obviously, things have dramatically changed um, since the last meeting. Uh, and I think that we owe it to Boston to at least look into it and investigate if this is going to be the best way forward. So my view's completely changed and I do think it's a really good idea to explore this. Uh, I also agree with uh, Councillor Dorian about all the special things that belong to Boston need to be kept safe and looked after and not disappear in, um, in this uh, process. Um, so yes, I just wanted to say that I um, fully support moving forward and investigating this. Thank you. Thank you, Deborah. Our next speaker is Councillor Yvonne Stevens, please. Thank you, Yvonne. Thank you, Chairman. Um, like my fellow councillors, um, I'm of the same opinion. Um, things have moved on, um, and I think it prudent. Um, now to um, to get our officers to to task them to work at exploring um, uh, the possibilities of the town council and especially with devolution around the corner so I will be supporting this I think it's a jolly good idea thank you chairman thank you Val. Two further speakers, Chairman, at the moment. Firstly, Councillor Alan Bell, please. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Karen. Yeah, Brian Rush has summed it all up for me. We are passionate. I am one of those people that came across the border a couple of three years ago without a passport. But I am very passionate about Fenside, Boston. It is a place, it's got, it's unique. I've read the uh, book that some of our colleagues have produced. It's a fantastic place and we mustn't let it go anywhere. It's got to keep its heritage. We, as Councillor Dorian says, the family silver. Councillor Griggs saying the same thing. It must stay here. But we all must remember that we've got to support the people of Boston. The residents are our employer. So we have got a duty to protect them. And I want to see this town council. We spoke about it many times, Chair. And you never know, the people of Fenside might even get the cameras back. And at that, I'll leave it. Thank you, Chair. <laughs> Thank you, Alan. Our final speaker, Chairman, at this part in the proceedings is Councillor Alison Austin. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Chairman, for allowing me to come back, which I try not to do, as it's not good practice. Um, I suppose it's a plus and not a minus. Um, some of the matters, the financial matters, are what we won't have carte blanche to do exactly what we want, because, of course, like any parish council, um, we will have to employ any officers, you know, a clerk, all these sort of people. We'll have to rent premises or if, unless we own them, I suppose we can meet in the guild hall, and we'll have to conform to whatever financial restrictions there are on local government, um, you know, demanded by local government. In other words, what central government says, you know, how much you can put things up and all this sort of thing. But of course, another question will be, I've likened it to a divorce settlement. I wonder what we'll end up sort of what the financial divorce settlement will be um, when you know when we're cut loose from the actual borough um, council as it now is well this is all stuff that's going to come in in the report isn't it but you know that's certainly a big question but I'm fully supportive it's the right time and the right thing to be doing now thank you thank you thank you Alison Chairman, Councillor Griggs has indicated he'd like to come back to committee. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Griggs. 
Yeah, um, just to come back on something Councillor Austin said, yeah, I, I'd sooner we lose the divorce but are masters of our own destiny than, you know, sit in a big unitary council where potentially there would be money, but you're fighting tooth and nail all the time to actually get the change or things that our residents are asking us for. Mm, I agree. Thank you, Councillor Good. Thank you. Any more speakers, Karen? Not at the moment, Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, well, thank you all for that, for your support. <clears throat> I mean, I, I, I agree with, with basically everything that's been said. Uh, I mean, to me, um, as a passionate person who, who, who's been fighting for a town council for Boston for, for many, many years, um, to me, the unitary uh, thing is every cloud has a silver lining, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. Um, but um, I, I would remind members that um, Boston Borough Council, before reorganisation, was just a town. And the municipal buildings belonged to Boston, um, and everything that the, the, everything belonged to Boston. Um, the only difference now um, is that there's a new badge that the mayor of Boston currently has. Everything else was there before, and it all belonged to Boston. So I would, well, I would, wouldn't be happy if any any part of that was disappeared. But there you go. Um, but thank you for that. I mean, obviously, the ins and outs will all have to come back to. Uh, to, to this committee uh, to move forward and to the council, of course. Um, but I mean, I think although we're tasking the officers with bringing the report back, there has to be political will as well. Uh, and I thank you all for that this evening. Um, it gives uh, gives me a remit to move forward and and, and really uh, push this forward. Thank you all very much. I will take the vote on that. It has been proposed by myself and seconded by Councillor Bell. So if you would like to, uh, do the roll call, Karen, please. Thank you, Chairman. Councillor Alison Austin? Four. Councillor Alan Bell? Four. Councillor Anton Danny? Four. Councillor Anne Dorian? Four. Councillor Vivian Edge? Four. Councillor Deborah Evans? Four. Chairman? Four. Councillor Martin Griggs? Four. Councillor Neil Hasty? Four. Councillor Brian Rush. Four. Thank you, sir. Councillor Yvonne Stevens. Four. Councillor Colin Woodcock. Four. And Councillor Stephen Woodliffe. Four. Thank you, committee. That's unanimous, Chairman. Thank you. Thank you very much, Karen. And the fourth item on this evening's agenda is the town deal which would be presented by uh, Michelle Sachs, the Deputy Chief Executive of Place, and is a separate report which, which all members should have received. Um, Michelle does apologise for the lateness of this uh, um, report, and she has uh, apologised to me personally for, uh, for it, but um, it is for us only for noting, uh, uh, as um, the report makes clear, uh, and the decision to be taken by full council, um, I have asked Michelle to bring this update to us, uh, to you as your representative effectively on the, the town deal board. And Michelle has agreed to come and do this presentation for us this evening. So uh, I'll ask Michelle to, uh, to get through the report, please. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Goodell. Uh, good evening, committee. I think this is a really positive report and it's, I think it's a nice one to end an evening on. Um, as you'll be aware from reading the report, we have been allocated uh, the opportunity of 750,000 to be spent on capital projects by the 31st of March 2021. Um, I've appended the FAQs that uh, pertain to the town deal funding and at the back of those there is a very small updated uh, section on, on um, the accelerated funding. I was fortunate enough to be on a Q&A session with the head of the unit from Bayes in terms of what some of these uh, spends could be on. And I think one of the common themes, which is, is answered uh, as one of these questions, but I can perhaps add some more context to, was if this funding is spent on projects, does it come off the up to 25 million? And the response has been no, because it's not that we'll get say 25 million and then they'll take off the 750,000. 
they are going to allocate funding to each project that they see uh, being a successful um, intervention to level up Boston and assist Boston in reaching the ambition that we clearly have. The other aspect um, I was keen to ask um, at that Q&A is if projects are funded through the accelerated funding stream, does that mean they automatically get a free pass onto um, an approved town investment plan following the, the negotiations with government? And the answer is no. So there's no concern um, that we should worry about whether these individual projects we've identified in this paper will eventually be a part of the wider town deal, town investment plan. These are bespoke projects that are designed to assist the local communities, both to kickstart the economy and again to, to look at public realm, skills, enterprise, and also sporting and recreational facilities. I think one of the advantages of the, the range of projects that we've identified as being suitable for this, um, the first barrier is the spend by the 31st of March, and it has to be capital. So initially there were some really good ideas coming through, um, but they were revenue spend. So one of the examples that we looked at, but we will seek to fund elsewhere, is a redundancy support hub. That's not a particularly uh, flashy title, it's not particularly um, engaging, but pretty much it's designed to provide a collection of individual organisations to support our communities as COVID takes hold in terms of redundancies. So we really wanted to bring that forward, but because most of those costs are revenue based, um, we couldn't put that forward as an accelerated funding scheme. Another one that was mentioned to us, uh, looking again as to see how uh, funding is being spent further up the coast in Maplethorpe and Skegness, was whether we could take a single project and invest the complete 750,000. The challenge with that, we felt, that um, is it's really important that our community uh, can see the benefits of the town deal to them. And therefore, if we went for a single project, it might be such as purchasing land. The outcomes of those projects, whilst the purchase of the land may have taken, will have taken place before the 31st of March, the actual outcomes connected to having purchased that land and then what will it be utilised will be several years down the line. And we felt in terms of being a positive message to our communities about what the, the, the possibilities of the town deal are and increasing that, again, the language of levelling up Boston, we felt that actually the um, best approach there was to effectively use the capital, 750, either to plug existing projects to enable them to come forward and complete, so we could spread the funding more effectively, or look at bespoke projects that actually are pertinent to the town centre, as an example, and work towards raising the profile of Boston as a place to visit, work and live, and also um, encourage that post-COVID-19 activity. So if I take you through, I mean, um, the report is before you, and thank you, Councillor Goodell, for noting my apologies. Um, the reason why uh, Haven High Academy 3G pitch is an absolute key one, is that when we were doing the consultation around my town and sporting uh, facilities, we had a significant amount of interest about 3G and 4G pitches and the lack of provision that Boston as a place has compared to other districts across the county. And there was a real sense that Boston is, is underrepresented in those types of uh, sports facilities. This ties in with our health agenda where we're trying to encourage people to be more active. And again, by increasing the health for the, the sporting facilities, we can see that there will be a natural input impact in terms of people actually being able to take up more sport. This also works well in terms of our partnership. We work really closely with Haven High. Um, we've had several initiatives and, and projects in the past in terms of close working. And through the town board, again, um, we see the Witham Academy um, being a key player in terms of the skills and enterprise thing. So that is a really positive message, both to the students of Haven High, those who will be using that, and again to the wider communities among, uh, within Boston about the increase of the 3G provision of sporting pitches. 
We also have two letters of support for that project, one from the Lincolnshire FA uh, Football Association and one from the Football Foundation as well that um, the head teacher, Aidan Hyde, has kindly supplied to me as part of his um, submission to uh, request that that project is funded. Following on the skills and enterprise theme, uh, Boston College is due to open its new Digital Transport and Logistics Academy. And part of the Townsdale Fund, there is a, a strong emerging project where the Port of Boston and the logistics industry, is its profile is raised and the quality of what's on offer to the rest of the country, both in skills, um, training and actual technology, uh, technic, technical expertise. It's worth noting that approximately 40,000 jobs are dependent in the southeast of Lincolnshire on the logistics industry. And whilst many of those industries may actually be based in South Holland, many of our residents commute to those jobs, both either in those logistic companies or in the supporting supply chains. And that is a key project that I'm in uh, many discussions with a wide range of partners, including uh, the involvement of Midlands Connect in terms of a project for Boston in port expansion and raising the profile of the logistics industry on our patch. By supporting the college, we are supporting our young people who then have access to different skills and opportunity to be able to stay here in our borough and not believe they have to leave to find meaningful employment. There's also the advantage that it raises the profile for adult learners. If we think of the post-COVID situation, we know that uh, Boston as a borough, along with many other districts, not just in Lincolnshire, but throughout the region and the country, are likely to see significant redundancies as a result of the economic impact of the COVID-19 um, lockdowns. What this opportunity does is bring the college uh, further forward in being able to provide that training and learning, again, not just for our young people, but for our adult learners who may need to retrain and consider careers and employment in a different sector. And we believe in a post-COVID-19 situation, that's an incredibly strong project. Uh, and again, it will be spent by the 31st of March. The Boston Town Heritage Projects, uh, we've seen uh, significant success within the marketplace and, and down the lanes uh, with previous uh, town heritage projects. And certainly uh, we've got a huge amount of positive feedback regarding uh, the impact that has on actually the place of Boston Town. So again, I think the, the most iconic one that I know lots of people talk about is Hoppers, but also the improvements at the top of Bridge Street compared to what that was and what that now is in terms of an attractive street scene. The purpose of this is to um, again build upon that heritage of Boston, which is something that we are all immensely proud of. I've heard many of you tonight talk about your passion for Boston. And we are lucky that we have had the port, which not only has provided uh, the money in the past that gave Boston the wealth to provide those heritage buildings during the, the years, but also as part of the town's deal is emerging as a key anchor for why the port will be the, 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 um, the, the anchor, I shall say, no pun there with the port and boats, uh, but the anchor in terms of drawing further investment and opportunity as a result of different opportunities that might be presented and which are now being explored. And it creates a USP around the port and the town regarding, again, that link with the, the past heritage but the future in looking forward. Uh, and there are the projects listed within there that have already been identified that we'd like to bring forward as part of this accelerated funding. The Experience Boston Travel, Trade and Influence project again follows on to the placemaking um, element of creating Boston as a place to, to travel to, a destination, and seeks to highlight um, to visitors but also our, 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 our existing residents. I think Councillor Rush, you referred to that earlier on when you talked about those of us who are new who have moved into Boston and the passion that we feel and how we can um, share that passion with those who have lived here and their families have been here for decades and, and generations. And, and this project is something that really builds upon that and ties in with the town deal 
and the accelerated funding outputs of being able to deliver something to support the high street. Um, this is a very good example of how we take numerous uh, in terms of retail, heritage, footfall, increased opportunity to, to support the high street. The next project is the P21 feasibility funding. Um, many of you attended the consultation that we did towards the back end of last year. And we have, uh, this project has unfortunately slowed as a result of COVID-19 and just the resources that we've had internally to be able to dedicate to this. However, it is still a project that is seen by our partners as being key to the regeneration of the town centre, the repurposing of the town centre. We know that retail will never have the place it did, or certainly not for decades to come, as again, we look at the um, impact of COVID-19 on our high streets. This project is recognised as being one that creates a different reason for people to come into the town centre, a different reason to um, engage in the town centre, so that once you're here, and then you've got the opportunity then to, to meander around, those very places that have been subject to the increased heritage funding and make the place more attractive. We want to encourage people to, to repurpose their reason for coming to the town centre as part of um, what is, as we say, an underutilised and uninspiring entry point into the town centre. In regards to the, the last project, the sanctuary, there has been, a, there's a theme uh, emerging around the community facilities and we've seen certainly during the COVID um, challenges around our more vulnerable in society. And one of the uh, key outputs of the town deal, when we talk about levelling up, is to actually increase productivity and prosperity for individuals, not just the wider economy. And some of that drills right down to the economic activity and the economic potential of individuals. The project that's described um, at the Sanctuary, again, you'll see it's already a joint project that we're in partnership with the Sanctuary and forms part of the bid to um, MHCLG, is designed to do that. It's designed to take some of those more vulnerable in society and be able to support them to turn around their lives and then ultimately become an economic, it sounds harsh, but it's the terminology, an economically viable unit. And where those measurements will be is where we can see an increase per household and this is a really important theme that's emerging so that, again, as we take on the uh, wider uh, economic ambition, we don't forget those who may need more support to be part of that journey. This is about, as I can't say, the levelling up of Boston to put us in a position in respect of some of those cities that have had the funding for many, many decades. Uh, and this is why that project is so supported by um, the community and partners in respect of that. I hope that's a useful summary in terms of the projects and, and some of the activity of the town board. I think it's probably useful just to highlight that the emerging themes of the town deal, um, particularly around the town investment plan, are heavily, heavily weighted to skills and enterprise, connectivity, which is not just digital, but transport as well, urban regeneration, tourism heritage and community facilities. And what we're very keen to demonstrate is that many of these projects, whilst they may be um, a tourist, tourism and heritage project, actually also have components of skills and heritage, uh, sorry, of skills and enterprise. So again, uh, just by way of example, some of the works that are required to our heritage buildings to create uh, and enhance the place that Boston is as a destination do require capital works but they also require individuals to undertake those capital works. And the college, um, Boston College, is very much part of these discussions in terms of providing, as we propose projects, we're looking to see where we can increase the offer in terms of uh, skills and training that the college provide to then provide the resource to be able to do those works as well. And that's a common theme we're taking through. And if I use an example of the community's facilities, where we have projects that uh, within there are emerging in partnership to create an offer for a wider community facility um, theme, they are also picking up that where the building they have is one that has got heritage um, attractions to it. They are linking back with uh, Lincolnshire Heritage, heritage Lincolnshire 
as to how they can enhance the offer. So it's not just about the community facilities, it's about how to take that space and place and enhance the heritage offer it has as well. So you'll see it's a, a, each of the themes we want to be able to dovetail and have a golden thread through so that that creates a very strong offer for what Boston has to offer in terms of its USP. And for us, that the uh, data, you know, the, the evidence base which we've compiled, um, we've compared Boston with 10 other um, similar type of towns. Um, and they do include uh, such as Kings Lynn, Corby, Carlisle, South Hams. And the key thing for us is that actually education in our borough is actually the worst performing. We are worst performing in our comparison of our 10 um, like, like um, authorities. So that's where the theme for skills and enterprise is really important. We know that we have some of our young people have the lowest um, ex, uh, aspirations, not just in the county, but in the region. And we really are working with not just our secondary schools, the college and the university, but we're also working with primary schools as well. So we truly create that golden thread through education to say, actually, this is what is on, this is what is available in Boston. This is where we are, have our ambition to be. And these are the types of projects that we want to deliver. So our young people have that excitement of opportunity and future here and we keep them with their amazing enthusiasm their brains their skills their innovation here in boston uh, and that's it for me councillor goodale and i'm happy to take questions from everybody well, thank you michelle uh, that, that, that's uh, i mean thank you for that it's uh, although i've I, I know i've been sort of at the meetings but it's it's really um, great that the BTEC have had the opportunity to, 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 hit, to have this report and to see the enthusiasm that the board and you and the board actually have for some of these, um, well, for all of these projects. It's a very exciting uh, time, I think, for Boston if we can get this money spent wisely. Uh, and, and I do believe that um, we're getting the balance reasonably well about right. Uh, I mean, when I first came onto this council, I have to say I have, I've been on the council for a long while and to some degree it has been a failure. But when I first came on the council, I came on the council because I had two young children. And I didn't want them to have to leave Boston for lack of opportunity. Unfortunately, they both have left Boston for a lack of opportunity. So um, I, I'm, I'm only too pleased and proud to support anything that gives children in Boston the, the, the opportunity to stay here, use their skills, use their intelligence and brains and, and, and really put the town forward. And I think enthusiasm for learning is, is, is the key to it all. Um, um, I don't think that can be, uh, that can be uh, emphasized enough. Well, thank you for that, Michelle. I'll open the- uh... Oh, if I may, Councillor Goodell, just to follow up a few things you said there, I think what puts us in a different position today, and certainly from the last couple of years, is the feedback we have and the engagement we have with our partners. So perhaps an observation of mine might have been that historically, and Boston um, as a place, uh, many of our great institutions and organizations have tended to work in isolation. And all the great things that each of those organizations is doing has been lost because uh, there's not been the connection and how do, we, how do we really work in partnership? And we were able to really ignite that partnership working through the PE21 concept. And the town's deal has been a, a real platform. And for that, this is what we are really, really excited about. One of the ethos of the government is that the town deal should be used to be a platform. So whilst the projects that emerge through the town deal, and there will be a period of negotiation following submission, and not all of our projects that we put forward will be successful, um, it, it, that, that's negotiation with, with government. Although I hasten to say that we are going to be submitting in excess of 25 million because we, we see our ambition as being not curtailed to up to 25 million. Knowing that we'll have the negotiation process, we want to put more in so we've got a bartering position to really get to, if you're saying up to 25 million, then we'll have 25 million on the nose. Not we've gone in for 25 and be negotiated down to 15. So there's something around 
the, the ambition, but it's the partners that we have around the table. Um, and I'm working on another project at the moment, um, which is which is embryonic, um, but has the potential to really shift Boston into a different dimension. And I can't, though, though I've got several projects that, and again, similar to some of the, the emerging things in, in the town deal, at this stage, those organisations haven't yet gone public with them. And the next couple of, well, the next four to six weeks is really getting out our partners to go public with what their projects are. So we can start to engage our communities in that um, consultation exercise and, and really excite them as to the potential. But I come back to it's our partners and our partners want to work with us. They want to sit around the table with Boston because they can see our ambition and they can see our enthusiasm and our passion to deliver those. And that's not just educational establishments, that's um, rail companies, that's transport companies, that's logistic companies, it's other public sectors. Those, those organisations want to do business with us and we are at a really exciting time. And we have used the town deal everywhere, well, pre-COVID, everywhere I could go, I went and talked about Boston, Boston's town deal. And it did open doors. It gave me leads into other people. It gave me contacts with other people. And they are now bubbling away in the background. And we can demonstrate to government we have taken this, this project and we have used it as a platform Ooh. to promote Boston. And I think that's something I can't underestimate and undersell because we are so proud of how Boston is seen externally by our partners in this process. Thank you. And then I, I will, because you know what I'm like, Paul, I could. Uh, indeed, yeah. You're, you're all tired. Yeah, no. <laughs> oh, you enthused about this all day for me, but thank you very much for that, Michelle. Um, I'll open the, the, the meeting to the debate then. Karen, um, can you call members to the screen, please, that wish to speak? Thank you, Chairman. We do have speakers. First, Councillor Anne Dorian, please. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm glad I get to speak first because I'm going to speak and then going to leave the meeting, Mr Chair, because I have declared an interest uh, because okay. of my employment with Haven High Academy and the report's asking us to support this uh, recommendation. Um, so I just want to speak on the items and then I'll go. Um, the Haven High Academy thing it would be a great thing for Boston. I'm speaking as an XP teacher, I'm speaking as a parent, I'm speaking as a member of the local community who has a uh, uh, a husband that could do with losing some weight in actual fact so this this 3g pitch won't just be for students at haven high it won't just be for young people like wilberton football club there will be opportunities for yeah. things like um walking football for men and women who are of a certain age and who aren't as agile as perhaps they once were mr chair um so that and i will say actually there is no such thing as a 4G pitch. You mentioned that, Michelle, on page four. There isn't anything such as a 4G pitch. Nothing 4G is recognised by any of the sporting bodies at all at the moment. So 3G is the cutting edge. I don't want elected members thinking we're, we're kind of, you know, down a peg in terms of what's available. We haven't got an iPhone 6 when everybody else has got an iPhone 10. Um, I'm really pleased about the heritage projects, Mr. Chair. Oh, sorry. Let me talk about the Boston College. Again, anything to do with education, I'm really passionate about. I had the benefit of, um, after being elected, I spent a fascinating afternoon with the transport manager of Metzawood. And I would encourage you, Michelle, to perhaps go and meet with him. Um, they've given all their transport and logistics to Eddie Stobart. And that company is now running all their uh, wood in and out of the site. Um, he gave me some fascinating information. Not uh, the thing that stuck in my mind is that we are this. The UK is a couple of hundred thousand uh, HGV drivers short to what the country actually needs. So if you could link that logistics in with somehow getting young people to learn to drive, to take up long distance lorry driving HGV, that would be fantastic. Um, the heritage projects, I think are wonderful. And, I'm sh and I think that our challenge, now that 
uh, Marks and Spencers is closed, now that Alders is closed, now that I know that several, well, at least two other independents that I know of are thinking of closing as soon as they can get out their leases. Our challenge is going to be keeping shoppers in the town yeah. and they're going to have to walk past boarded up shops or empty shops to get to Dolphin Lane, to get to Emery Lane, to get to the Guildhall. And it's going to be a real challenge for us going forward. So it is really important um, that we get this heritage uh, experience right and the, the trade traveling influence. Um, uh, the, I, I thank you for your apology with the report being late because I've not had the chance to explore where exactly 16, 17 marketplace are or a Dolphin Lane. You, you might be able to answer that in a minute, Michelle, and I'd be grateful if you can. I'm really pleased that you're doing the feasibility study on the P21 project. As you know, that was sadly lacking from our merger with East Lindsay District Council. And this will give us the guardrails going forward with P21 that will um, help us avoid the pitfalls as it were and it will be money well spent it will save us money in the long run um this project with the sanctuary restored church is fabulous i mean what who who could argue with that um to provide these opportunities for homeless people i would have liked to have known how many self-contained accommodation units they're hoping to provide i'm delighted they're working with um andy fisher He's one of our most competent officers. I couldn't praise him highly enough. I really, really couldn't. And uh, anything that they do with him, I have no doubt will be a success. Um, going forward, I would also ask you, Michelle, to make sure that they dovetail with Centrepoint Outreach because they are a fantastic organisation and they, they've served this town extremely well um, in the past and at the present. So all in all, Mr. Chair, I'm delighted with the report. Um, I'm, um, you can tell from my words what I feel about it, but I'm not going to say either way anything else so that I don't get myself in any trouble. So, um, Mr. Chairman, as Councillor Dorian is leaving, would it be helpful if I were able to respond to those questions before she left the meeting? Yes, please. Thank you, um, Michelle. I already, thank you about Metzerwood. I already have a great connection there um, with Kate and with Lee, and I've had several meetings. And also, um, Kate uh, is working closely with Claire Foster at the college as well, and actually, collectively, as Boston, Metzerwood, and the college, we have a really good idea, a, a really exciting idea around how we can provide mentoring for our young people in secondary schools in terms of the resilience in the business community. So. And in terms of the um, transport links, in terms of HGV, that's exactly where the new uh, logistics centre is going to be part of in order to expand and, and, and raise the profile of some of these jobs that people don't actually realise and may have a view, but when they explore mm. them, they're actually a better uh, employment opportunity than they think. Um, the just in terms of empty shops, it's worth, you're absolutely right, and that's a, a big concern for Clive and I, um, in terms of the impact as we emerge fully out of COVID, what the town will look like with empty shops. Now again, um, I am subject to confidentiality with those that I'm speaking with, because they, um, again, again, it's about how they want to deal with their own building, so I can't share that with, with um, committee tonight. But again, you'll recall there was the fund that Cabinet approved in March that was a feasibility fund that allowed us to work with um, building owners in the town centre that if they own a building and they don't believe they can reopen as a retail or a shop um, type uh, offer, how can we work with them? And that is designed to part fund those feasibilities. So kickstart their ideas about bringing a building back into use so it doesn't just sit vacant. Um, and we've got that in hand and we've seen, uh, we've, we've got some of those already. So, so again, I hope the committee will be pleased about that. I will find out for you how many um, units will be uh, aimed for sanctuary. In terms of centre point, I think it's worth pointing out that um, the community facilities, that is the theme under the town deal, is actually a collective of several of our key um, providers in the voluntary sector in the town. 
and we are and what they have been tasked to do they came forward with lots of ideas but actually in order to think about the offer i couldn't have four of them come through with the same age group so i've asked them to go away and they're working together and they're being supported as well um by stuart helen to actually work together in partnership to be able to get that level of support for our vulnerable people from the very beginning of life to the very end so that all um, demo, all age groups, I shall say, are, are captured and all needs so that the complete offer that will emerge through that project and that intervention can truly be um, all encompassing to the economic activity for our, for our community and our individuals. So Centrepoint are absolutely part of that. Elizabeth is, is very is involved, as are um, the Stump, as are, um, I can't remember all their names off the top of my head now, but they are all involved in that project strand. And, and we are really excited about the art of the possible for that because we can't see from what we're picking up that anybody else is really looking at that. And if we're going to talk about economic levelling up, again, it's really easy just to focus on um, those already in employment, our young people or, or mm -hmm. those who need to, to retrain, as opposed to some who actually don't even have a house or a place to call their own. Because to get onto the economic ladder when you don't have a safe space to call your home is already an impediment. And we are we're losing our community, sections of our community, by not doing that. And just on the 5G, uh, Carr's Grammar School does have a 5G pitch, but they are very different in terms of their offer. And it's the 4G pitch that um, we, we need. So that's it for me. I hope that responds to your questions, Councillor Dorian, and thank you for your feedback on the report. Thank you, Michelle. Uh, Karen, who, who, can you call the next speaker to the screen, please? Yes, thank you, Chairman. Councillor Alison Austin, please. Thank you, um, Karen, thank you, Chairman. Um, because in the Sanctuary um, project, as is um, submitted today, it's only concerned with the um, purchase of the building, so um, Centrepoint Outreach isn't referred to, no. um, so I'm quite free to say what I want at this stage. There's um, no interest for you, Councillor no, Austin. No, no, no. Um, well, I think, as Michelle knows, I've taken a great interest in this um, whole uh, town fund from the very beginning. I have uh, talked many times with her over matters. I've, I've submitted a project, which um, I don't know what's going to happen to it in the end. I've made numerous comments as well. But um, often, I think, as you've said, they are a compilation of various ideas that people have put forward. Um, if I just run quickly through some of them, um, bearing in mind the um, uh, aims of all the, uh, you know, the guidelines, obviously the Haven High one, health, um, very, very important. Um, we want our citizens, people younger than me, I regret to say, go round in mobility scooters if they'd been a little bit more active when they were younger, maybe they wouldn't now be in that situation. Or maybe if they'd had a small sensible diet, some of them might not now have um, uh, diabetes. And as someone who has um, sort of on the cusp of type 2 diabetes, I've never been overweight in my life, it's genetic. But, um, you know, it, it, it is a lot, a lot is your lifestyle, isn't it? And um, everything we can do to encourage um, uh, physical activity, the better. Going on to the second one um, about skills and for that matter later on about connectivity, whether it's broadband or transport, anyone who and Councillor Griggs will have occasionally heard me at County Council. I'm going on in economic scrutiny regularly about Boston needs skills. Boston needs skills. They've heard me over and over again. And equally in full council, I think I've referred to um, the lack of good um, uh, broadband in one or two areas, only just outside the actual 
town um, boundary, um, which is one reason why I'm here today. Um, and also um, about the poor infrastructure, roads and transport um, and you know, rail. Um, you'll be pleased to hear though, I'm not going to offer to drive lorries. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> I'm not so good at parking always, am I? Was it Councillor Griggs who witnessed it once in this car park? Um, somebody did anyway. Um, right, uh, I think these tick all the boxes. I've known of a lot of these projects already. I take it that the heritage one is very much what Matt, Matt Bentley's been doing, isn't it? And um, in, in the next one, in, in the one about travel, trade and influence, the explore and discover, I've already heard about um, through, I think it'd be Polly again, um, probably. Um, and um, PE21, that's exciting. I think there's so much potential there. And um, although I know that vaguely the sanctuary was, I didn't know what it was called. Uh, I knew Restore Church had an idea, but I had no idea exactly what it was. And I think it'll be watch the space with interest. Are we just tonight just sort of um, what's the word, receiving your report, or are we having to vote at the end? And of course, what happens when we come to full council next week? Um, we are noting this report, uh, Councillor Austin, and we're, all right, well, basically, we're, we're noting the report, and it going, it's going to full council next week, so. That's um, good. Yes, no, well, it's a long evening, and I've forgotten what the front page said now. All right, okay. thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. I think I'll finish now, everybody. You needn't hear from me again tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Rusty. Anyone, okay, next speaker, Karen, please. Thank you, Councillor Danny, please. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And thank you, Michelle, for the report. Uh, first of all, I just want to clarify the, uh, the figures because we have here um, the sum of 750,000. But according to counting the projects, it's come to 910,676, if that's correct. Uh, the other thing I want to clarify for Councillor uh, Alison Austin, diabetes doesn't come only to the obese people. It can come to people who are completely fit. It can come to kids. So we, we cannot talk, I think. We need more knowledge about that. Uh, I have a few points I want to discuss, which is... <clears throat> Uh, as um, myself, I mean, despite I'm British, but I wasn't born in United Kingdom, but as I say, this is my home, this is my country. I think we have to educate people in this town as well. I think we have to, 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 to have some money for education and the education only will be based uh, to make people understand that uh, we can work with other groups of people, other ethnic minorities. We should be able to work with them because I think we ignore a lot of people. I think we're ignoring other, uh, other ethnic groups in this town, and and they're making they're making the population. Uh, uh, there is a lot of kids from um, European parents in this town. A lot of kids, and they're coming. I think on daily basis. Unfortunately, uh, Councillor Dorian is not with us, but she will tell us this. There is a lot of ki kids coming to this town, so we have to look after these kids. Uh, we have to give opportunities to these people when they come to town, because I think there is a discrimination. It's still running in this town. And I think through education, we can erase the discrimination. And believe you in me, it exists. And I think through our hard work, we should get rid of it and make people understand that we're all equal and we're all here to work and pay our taxes for this country. And we're here to contribute. And I think this is this is three facts for me. It should be clear to everyone in this town. Um, the third thing which is I want to touch is sport. I mean, my kids, they went to grammar school. The main sport, it was football or rugby. Most of the kids, they play, they play football. Uh, European kids, most of them, they like to play volleyball, basketball, handball. And we don't push for these sports to be probably uh, a new thing in our town. And I think we have a great potentials in this town. And why I'm talking about this sport, I used to have a mother and her son, they used to come to my cuff, I think twice a month. And the boy, he was tall and he used to play basketball. 
And he used to com not complain, but he used to tell me his story. He say, I couldn't find a group of people playing basketball in Boston. So I had to travel each time I want to play basketball, I go to Kingsley. And I feel sorry for him. Why we don't push for basketball in schools? Heaven High, Grammar School, High School, and all the schools around this town. I think it's very important to find talent in every sport. I mean, I know there is uh, the Beehive, which is just in Punchable Lane, which is they used to do a training for youngster for cross country and running and uh, sort of a thing. But we're not pushing for these kind of sports. A handball, uh, I don't think so there is a team in England. We could be the pilot scheme in this town. We should probably uh, sacrifice a little bit of money and push for these kind of activities. And unfortunately, we don't. And that will give us a balance in all around sport. Uh, I still feel that um, we can uh, work with other nationalities uh, because other nationalities, when I talk to them, and I have talked to a lot of them, Lithuanian groups, Polish, they're all marginalized. And, and that's the fact. We can say that we help people if they want to learn English. Yes, we give them opportunities. But some of them, they are very, very educated individuals. And they feel they are, they felt and they complained. And they say with the council, we didn't get through. One of them, I'm not going to mention the name of the lady. She's one of the leaders in this town of the Lithuanian community. And she'd been to the council many times. They asked her once to come and take pictures. And then when she left, nobody contact her. And they say, no, you're going to be part of the project. And these people, they have voice in this town. They can give us a lot. They can be an asset to this town. But unfortunately, I feel that discrimination is still alive and kicking. And I will say that these people are matters in this town. And we should reach to them. We shouldn't ignore them. And I would like to speak you know, on their behalf. We cannot ignore these communities. We cannot ignore these people. All what we hear is negative and complaints. Complaints, complaints, complaints. True, I think Facebook, Boston page, and some people, they are doing it on daily basis. But none of anybody came and say, no, actually these people, they are, they are assets to our town. They are working around with, in a lot of factors while our own British people, some of them, they don't wanna work. Some of them, they're not working. They're sitting at home. So we should appreciate these people. And I think we should, we should at least have a small budget to how to bring this community with us all together and we can work together because they have brilliant ideas. They love to do gymnasium. Their kids, they love to do gymnasium, dancing. I know a group of Lithuanians, they do this break dance and they've been winning awards in Birmingham, Nottingham. They went, I think, to to London, they won a lot of awards. And when you talk to them, they say, nobody helped us. We do these things on our own. We use our own money. So if we have a project for the town and we want to go forward and we want to make Boston better, are we gonna make it by having it divided? We can't. Are we gonna make it by listening to a small group of people who are moaning on, um, on uh, the social media all the time that all foreigners are the same, all foreigners are dirty, all foreigners they're creating for us this. I think we have to work on our media to clarify and to make things better for everyone. And I think we should fight this kind of discrimination. I will call it discrimination. I think we sh it's time for us now to give an opportunity to these, um, a part of the world living in this town to contribute to work with us and we should invite them. Unfortunately, we don't. I invite them to my parlor a few times and I had to chat with them. And most of them, they complain. They have the same complaints. No, we try to do things, but nobody help us. And I would look forward if we can uh, probably have a little bit of budget and uh, work with these groups and see what we can achieve. Because Boston is not just for the English people in this town, it's British for the British, the history of this town, we can all share it and we can go forward. We have to learn from every person and we have to listen to people. And that's, I think, how we can go forward. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Danny. Um, not all of us actually read Facebook like you appear to do. <laughs> so I don't actually see all that, but... Um... Uh, to be honest with you, Mr. Chairman, sir, I don't read Facebook, but I tell you, people, they come to my cafe and I have all different peoples. I tell you, last week, I had people from Kent, from Epswish, Sheffield, 
and um, uh, from Kings Lane. So people, they visit Boston and they come to Boston, but, you know, uh, I try my best to give them the best uh, image about Boston and people that are happy to listen to our history because I give them the history lessons for free and I'm not shy of that. And I love it because last month I checked my cuff and it was 1,734 people visited the site. So people that are visiting from different towns and I think it's my duty and I feel responsible on behalf of the Bostonians to give a good image. So I listen to everyone. And as I say, I have people from Lithuania, from Poland, people come from Bulgaria, people they come from Romanians. Some of them, they don't speak English, but they speak Spanish. But you talk to these people and they tell you, we want to be part of Boston, but there is a brick wall. So we have to get through that brick wall. And I think uh, if, we, if we're gonna have, um, you know, the town's fund, I think we should use a little bit of money, you know, to create that kind of harmony in our town. Sorry, Mr. Chairman, but thank you very much for giving me the opportunity. No, that's right, Cassie Daniel. I thought we'd had hundreds of thousands of pounds come into the town to do that sort of thing, but obviously we didn't. No, it wasn't spent that way. Uh, who's the next speaker, please, Karen? Uh, Council Martin Griggs, Chairman, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, just on um, Councillor Danny's point, I, I wouldn't get too caught up on what Boston the people say. You know, by all means, pay attention to what's said on social media, but don't take it to heart. You know, there's been many, many times where actual good news has been reported on there, and some people will still always find the negative. Um, I, I'm, I'm a firm believer in that, you know, yes, Boston has its problems, but there is lots of good things about Boston. And I, I'm a massive advocate for things like fitness equipment and sports as not just... Yeah, um, something that can help people with their health, but also with their mental health in terms of social interaction. You know, when I was a teenager knocking around in the park, you played football with whoever was kicking around, regardless of nationality. Um, and it's the same with the basketball courts. Um, I think Councillor Austin will agree that at County, I'm also usually providing lots of scrutiny and ideas towards the skills agenda for Boston and Lincolnshire. And these projects I think are absolutely fantastic. You know, Haven High, while I was doing my teacher training there last year, were trying to reach out to the local community. And I know since I finished my teacher training there, they, they've really upped their game in terms of community engagement and thinking about how they can get people out and about and involved in the school. Um, for instance, they started a club where they go out and help um, people who live in the old people's bungalows nearby. And things like walking football and potential benefits from their 3D pitch development can only be a good thing. And I'm sure that um, the headmaster there will do everything he can to engage with the public. Um, I'm not going to speak on all of them because it's getting late, but in terms of the um, P21 feasibility study, I think you know, we, we need to start moving forward for it. We all know that town isn't going to be what it used to be when I was young. And I think this provides a, a direction of travel, if you will. The sanctuary, restore, uh, the sanctuary project is absolutely fantastic project. Um, I, I've discussed it with Andy Fisher several times, obviously, in my role as portfolio holder. Um, and they've been looking at how to do this for a while. And since we got Stuart Helen on board from the Citizens Advice, um, he's worked tirelessly to try and bring it closer to fruition and something that's achievable. Yeah. I, I, for instance, I, I currently have um, a request from a member of the public following the amount of money we spent on housing rough sleepers over the lockdown period. Obviously, we all know that the government turned around and said we need all rough sleepers off the street. And unfortunately, many of our rough sleepers deal with issues beyond just I don't, I don't have somewhere to sleep. Um, and unfortunately, that means they're expensive to house. Um, this sort of project is exactly what we need because it's all well and good giving people who've hit a bit of a rough time a house or, or you know, temporary accommodation to sleep in, but it doesn't address the root issues of why they're in that situation. And I think something like the sanctuary that allows different organisations to all be able to help people when, let's face it, they're in probably some of the lowest points in their lives, and it really gives them a leg up to be able to get back into some semblance of normality and you know, fend for themselves and provide the services they need. 
I think, you know, it's an absolutely fantastic project and I will be supporting all of these projects going forward. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Councillor Griggs. Um, next, Karen, please. No further speakers, Chairman. All right. Oh, that's, well, thank you for that, members. Um, well, we've just got um, the recommendations to full council with the report. Uh, there's just BTAC notes and supports the following recommendations to consider by full council on the 10th of August. And we note that some of 750,000 accelerated core funding to support capital projects and the response of immediate challenges to support the economic recovery of Boston, the inclusion of the 2021 capital programme, and authorise the Deputy Chief Executive uh, to, to confirm and write to the Ministry of Housing, Community and Local Government by the 14th of August for the project proposal that they're in line with the Towns Fund interventions. Um, can we, um, I will propose that. Can we have a second, please? I'll second that, okay. Chair. Thank you. Can we just go through the roll call then, please? Uh, the, um, Councillor <coughs> Alison Austin has left us and Councillor Vivian Edge. Very much indeed, Chairman. Uh, right, Councillor Alan Bell? Four. Councillor Anton Dunny? Four. I know Councillor Dorian's also gone. Councillor Deborah Evans? Four. Uh, Chairman? Four. Councillor Martin Griggs? Four. Councillor Neil Hasty. Four. Councillor Brian Rush. Councillor Rush is not currently in the participants. Thank you. Councillor Yvonne Stevens. Four. Councillor Colin Woodcock. Four. Councillor Stephen Woodley. Four. Thank you. Clearly carried, Chairman. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Michelle. For that, um, our final offer. Uh, final offer. <laughs> our final agenda item is the uh, the, the work. Uh, well, we got a presentation by Mr. Perry to start with, but then we're looking at the uh, work program. Will, did you want to come in? Uh, thank you, Chairman. Yeah, um, we've got on the seventh October at the moment. We've got the draft annual BTAC report and. Uh, an update on Central Park projects, uh, including the multi-use games area, uh, the skate park and boys projects. Uh, and um, there's also a proposal, um, Councillor Rush is, is, is not here now, but um, following on from uh, problems on Woodville Road, um, the a proposal to put a report forward for looking at securing the Woodville Road playing field, uh, sort of open space. Um, so, um, if you wish, officers will go away and put some options together as a costings to look at what um, options there are to either put bollards or fencing in place around that field to um, secure it in the future. We do have problems from time to time with um, uh, travellers getting onto the site. And of course it is open, which means say anybody can easily get onto that. So um, he was keen for us to look at uh, some opportunities to see what we could do to uh, limit that in the future. I think Phil, I um, yeah, I quite agree with that. I mean, I think it's, uh, I did, as I've asked you previously, we need to look at um, some form of uh, of fencing of some description. Obviously, the uh, the injunction we have doesn't seem to prevent the incursion that we've had on Woodville Road and, and the places. Obviously, the cleanup cost is going to be quite significant for us. So I'd like I'd like a proper re a full report to come back to to this committee of, of, of uh, not only the um, obviously the cost of fencing or uh, but also of the um, the clean up costs and everything else which we will probably need to provide so that the committee are aware um, of what uh, of what we're um, up against shall we say. I also would like um, the obviously the I was pursuing it to obviously about the um, um, town council, and I'd like to get that on through us moving as quickly as possible. So um, we'll have to well we'll find a space for that on there as soon as we have the report ready. I know. Yeah. yeah I'll, I'll take some advice on the town council when we can get that on for you. Um, I'm not quite sure how long it'll take to prepare. Well, no, I appreciate that, Phil. I mean, we we need to have uh, I need to have the, those discussions with the, our 
uh, a new officer, shall we say, <laughs> across across the water or whatever, or across the boundary, um, and find out what 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 the what their uh, experiences because obviously they have town councils all through East Lindsay. Do any of the members want to comment on the work programme, things they want to put on? Um, obviously the Woodville Road situation is a serious situation at the moment, which um, I know Councillor Rush wanted to speak on, but he's <laughs> gone, whether it's had to leave the buildings, I don't know. Um, but um, I'll go I'll... find out now for you, Chairman. So, Jason? I'll go find him now for you, Chairman. Okay, thank you. Um, he did want to come in. He did ask specifically to, to do it on this... Uh, uh, item. Any other members wish to speak on the items uh, on the work programme? Yeah, we've got a number of uh, members wishing to speak, Chairman. Just be mindful that if we get to 9.30, we will need to vote to continue after the three hours, Chairman. And I think I've oh, got yeah. a bit of a problem with my machine, so I might it might fall out. I need to speak to Jamie. Yeah. However, uh, we have okay. Councillor Griggs first, Chairman, followed by Councillor Danny, and then Councillor Evans, just in case my machine drops out, OK? So, so, Chairman, just quickly, we got ten minutes apparently before we will lose. I've got the same message come on my machine that it. Okay. Yeah. That it ten minutes. Yeah. Okay. So our last members to be very brief then. Yes, Jason. Uh, just for those two people that said they've got ten minutes on your desktop shortcut, there is a shortcut that says abort shutdown. That will prevent your machine and device going off, so it doesn't give you ten minutes. So if you can do that for me now, that will abort that shutdown and won't carry that one through. Councillor Rush has also left the building. Okay, well, I haven't got that on my machine, so... No, I haven't either. <laughs> I can't get to it either. No. You no. haven't got your board shut down? No. no. It's a yellow triangle. I haven't got oh, the yeah. 10 minutes on mine. No, 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 not for you, Councillor Goodale. Sorry, for the two officers. All right. No, no triangle. No, no I can't even get out of Zoom. I will send you a command to run. Bear with me. Do you want to carry on doing whatever you need to yeah. do? Uh, thank you, Jason. Right. If, if members, obviously, I'd like to conclude before 9.30, if members would like to comment. Uh, was it Councillor Griggs, please? Yeah, if I may, Mr Chairman, I will be extremely quickly. Um, the report on Woodville Road Park, can it also include the security at all other BTAC-funded sites? Because, obviously, if Indeed. we're looking at one, we may as well look at the rest. Thank you very much, Mr Chairman. Thank you, quite agree. Councillor Danny. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, I was just going to echo in what uh, Councillor Griggs has said and talking about uh, Woodville Road Park. Uh, I think we should consider all the BTAC parks because last time it happened in Widham Park, so in Widham Ward. So we should be, I think, coming with ideas what we can do. Uh, I seen the Widham Park, basically, I think the park there has a ditch and then has an entrance. I think we could probably do something similar with bridges in the Woodville Park. Uh, bear in mind, Woodville Park, there is the Westfield Avenue has an exit to the other side. So we have to secure that side as well if we do any bollard or anything. So uh, it's very concerning that these people will come and just, you know, litter everywhere and destroy everything and leave. And some people, they get hit with 200 pound for fly tipping, even if they don't do. So if they are caught or speeding, they pay 100 pound. So um, I think we should come with the strategy with the officers and, and try just to tackle this issue. We shouldn't, it shouldn't happen again. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, thank you, Anton. Oh, there. On your desktop. Uh, who's next, Karen? I've lost screen, Chairman. I don't know if you can hear me. I can hear you, yeah. I can't. I'm, uh, I'm sorry, yeah. I've completely lost the screen at the moment. It's okay, Councillor we... Evans, Deborah Councilor Evans, Evans. Councillor Evans. Thank you. Thank you. I'll be your, I'll be your yeah, secretary, Karen. Well, Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, um, Councillor Danny. Um, and, and I don't know what your ideas are on this proposal, but um, the biggest worry people have got at the moment oh, no vote. Me, are um, about the approach of people to try and take their dogs from them um, and I know it was uh, in Cambridge some dogs were taken and in Nettleham a woman was attacked to try and get a dog in 
at Sleaford Park. A woman was attacked to try and get her dog. Um, and several people have been approached on Spilsby Road. Myself, I had the same van stop when I was um, uh, on near Willoughby Hills. Um, and people are absolutely petrified to take their dogs out for a walk. Um, and I've actually written to Boris in the hope that we can get the law changed on this, which I think will have a, a big effect. So I think at the moment, one of the biggest worries for people in Boston, if they have a pet, is that they can't walk it or that they're scared stiff it's going to get stolen. So I don't know if that's something we could look at at BTEC. Um, could you um, tell me if that's the case, uh, Chairman? Please. Well, we can we can ask um, uh, through our, the, uh, when we have the police form. We can we can do it through that. I'm sure we can. Brilliant. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for a great meeting as well. <laughs> Thank you. A anyone else wish to speak? I can't see you. So if you just shout out, Colin. Yeah, just a quick one. I think it probably comes under the uh, police, but. Um, on Freeston Road now, we've noticed a great increase in speeding cars. Uh, people doing 60, 70 miles an hour um, at night because we haven't seen any police presence, police cars who are stopping people who are speeding. They're always engrossed, engrossed in doing something else. They've got lots to do because of COVID, but it's become very noticeable. Uh, about speeding cars, particularly on Freeston Road, which is a long straight road and it's being abused. So if we could probably look into it at some stage. Thank you. Thank you, Carl. Will do. If anyone else wishes to speak, you share out because I can't actually see you. I know I've got to now. There are no further speakers requesting to speak. Okay, Jason, thank you. Right, we'll, we'll, we'll just um, take that as, as being read then. Um, this concludes the meeting. I'd like to thank you all for your attendance this evening. It's been a long meeting and um, thank you all for your perseverance. Um, and uh, um, I hope the next one was a little bit more smoother than this one. But thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Have a nice evening, all of you guys. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, thank, thank you, you, Chair. I think it went down thank very well, well, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. The meeting will no longer be recorded from this point and we will now suspend live viewing. Thank you, Jason. Mm. Cheers, all. Have a good evening.